This is Mary at the Marriott TA, and it is Sunday evening, September the 27th. Hello to the Fibsville friends out there. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So, it's time to do another live stream. I tell you, I've had a very relaxing weekend. Let me set up my tablet here so I can see some chat. I did not do any art this weekend. <laughs> oh dear. What's the matter with you, Mary? There you all are. Hi, Mina. Hi, Candy. Hi, Melissa. Welcome, welcome. Hi, Julie Parker. Hello, hello. If I'm not mistaken, Julie is on the other side of the world from me. So we left off Friday evening. Was it? No, Sunday evening. And I was working on this little junk journal. Well, glue book junk journal. I've had a lot of fun in this. Um, we'll go back and work on that and maybe the other one. But right now, the very first thing that I want to do is pull out the seam binding. I don't think our satin ribbon did much, but I was doing some butterfly PT dry, dry, dying, dying, D-Y-E, not D-I-E. <laughs> I don't think the satin ribbon took on the dye. But I do think the, and it's been sitting here since Sunday evening. See, that's pretty much, it took on a little. It changed it a little. I'm going to pull it out, and maybe I'll put it in another, another batch. I think this is getting, but the, I think the, the seam binding did. So let's just pull it out. And it's got the, the little flowers in there that are holding on to it here. Now this was, I wanted to say it was uh, a cream seam binding, but I do think it was more of a light yellow. So this might have a little bit of a green cast to it. Blue and yellow make green here. Let's get this off. And I'm going to throw this out. I think that's been thoroughly used. And I'm just going to put the lid back on it. And this, I don't think this did much. It might have turned it a slight color. But what I'm curious about with this is if I hit it with the heat gun, will it start to melt? Because if it starts to melt when I hit it with the heat gun... I know that it's got something in there that is resisting, unless it's something that doesn't melt. <laughs> but nylon, anything plasticky will melt. As we found out, and Shannon posted and said that tag that I melted was Tyvek. Let's get this with the heat gun. Now I don't see it melting any. But it's sure not taking on the it's not taking on the dye. So I'm just gonna put this aside and let it dry. I'll probably take it out in the porch and maybe even put it in the dryer. But let's blot this other and I found my paper towels. <laughs> Let's just block this a little. It's not a beautiful blue, but it started out as yellow, so it's kind of a, a light greenish color, I think. Um, I thought, it, you know, I, it... It's sort of a cream yellow. It never really, you just kind of have to look at it to get the color. 
it never really said. And I'm finding seam binding is hard to find. I find plenty of bias tape, but what's with these companies that aren't making seam binding? I'm just going to kind of crumple this up in my hand. Let it absorb that. Let's hit this. See if this moves. I am happy with this. It kind of turned it a cream color. It dries pretty fast. I even went on Amazon. Now I found seam binding. Uh, but I'm not sure exactly. Some of it said rayon, and I'm kind of weary about rayon. Rayon cotton, I think it said. And this might be a rayon cotton for all I know. So that is the result of my butterfly PT dye test here. So I'm just going to let this, it's still damp. I'm just going to put it over on my desk and let it air dry. And... Let's see who's come in, who I have to say hello to. Hi, Holly Dalton. Welcome, welcome. There's Renee and Candy and Cheryl. Hi, Cheryl. Hi, Sticky Art Channel. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hi, Laura, the Jersey Crafter, Laura. Julie Parker, Lynn J. Hi, Lynn. <laughs> Lynn J. says she's lurking again because she's fixing dinner. I'll tell you that lady has to have something in her hands all the time. Usually she's driving to work. Tonight she's fixing dinner. I understand perfectly. I told my brother I was going online at 6 o'clock tonight, so he cooked dinner earlier. We had steak tonight. It's pretty good. And squash, butternut squash. And we couldn't find any smaller squash either. <laughs> we had to get a bigger one. I'm tempted to take what's left and blend it all up and make a soup out of it. Hi, hi, Gail. Welcome, welcome. Oh, Candy, I was going to get mine today and I ran out of time. What are they talking about? Barb and Chicken Pie Society is here. Cheryl's here. Nancy, Artsy Nancy is here. Hi, Sherry. Sherry Hobbing. I did have a pretty good, a pretty good weekend. I didn't do much. <laughs> That makes it good. Australia. Julie's from Australia. I thought you were on the other side of the world from me. There's Susan. Hottie Popo. And Melissa Young. Not Young. Melissa Long. And Julie and Candy and Nina. Now let's go back down to the bottom and see what I missed. You just melted your duvet and comforter with your heat gun. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. That's horrible. Hi, Desert Nana. Welcome, welcome. Juanita. She spins as Juanita. And Lori Paint Girly. Lori, I got my GAC 900. Now, I was reading this. GAC 900. I've never used this before. I need to research it a little. It is transparent. Oh, this says it's gloss. Did I get the gloss? Oh, I didn't realize this was gloss. It didn't say gloss on here. 
Only thing that says it's gloss is that little marker is way over to gloss. But there's no thing on here that says it's gloss. Well, it's a... Uh, it's thin, the thin kind. 100% acrylic medium modifies paints for a softer hand and increased laundrability or wearable fabrics. Must be heat set. So, Lori, when you painted on your purse, did did you heat set it with a with a heat gun, or uh, or did you just not worry about it? Directions. Mix one part of GAC 900 to one part of golden acrylic colors. Well, that's not going to happen. Allow to dry completely, then heat set as follows for three to five minutes. Medium heat or heat press one to two minutes. 30 clothes dryer, 30 to 40 minutes on high. Well, I'm not going to put my purse in the clothes dryer. Always test for application. Lori says, don't worry about heat setting it. Good. Now, then my next question, Lori's going to talk me through this because I've never used this product before, GAC 900. In fact, when I watched Lori do it in the live stream hop from last month, and by the way, there's a playlist on my channel. Um, I just think it's called September Live Stream Hop. It should be one of the top ones, one of the more recent ones. Uh, Lori painted a darling snowman on a purse. So, um, the way I, I think you did two things. You either painted the background or you mixed it in with your paint. Now, they say do one-to-one, -one, so I'm thinking that you, you can mix it in with your paint. You... Say GAC, not G-A-C. Okay, GAC. <laughs> GAC, 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 GAC. <laughs> it sounds like yak, 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 yak. Yakety, yakety, gackety, yakety, gak. <laughs> you need to heat set it or it won't actually set and be durable. Oh, really? Can I heat set it, sticky art channel, with my heat gun? Because I'm going to paint on a purse, like what uh, Lori painted a snowman on a purse and I want to paint my little um, I want to paint my little Pen Penelope pincushion doll let me show you the purse I got this purse at Johnny junk shop was it Johnny journal what what is her Johnny's channel art junk shop stop whatever uh, she's not doing auctions anymore, so I'm really glad I got this. I don't think I paid much for it. My tablet's falling here. I've got to find a better setup. I just have to find a better setup. Here's the purse that I'm going to paint it on. Right here. And I want to paint her. And I think Lori just used regular craft paint. Um, deco art craft paint and I just want to paint her such as Lori did on the cover on the front here on this side, because this side has a pocket and this is a soft leather kind of a dark maroonish color it's really cool because I have the is it no it's for the other one that I have the the little hook that goes with it it's on the other one the one I won but I want to paint her on here okay let's see what you guys are saying if it's cloth I'd heat set it but I haven't heat set on leather okay junk journal shop thank you Jersey um Johnny at junk journal shop and uh, I happened to get into her last auction. And the way I understand it, she's not going to do any more auctions. So I'm glad I got this. Yeah, putting Penelope on it will be cool. Can you test it on the bottom? Yeah, I can test it on the bottom. Um, and it probably wouldn't hurt it. 
Shall I test it with just a little GAC by itself? I haven't opened this yet. Let's see what's on the inside here. I imagine there's a little. Yeah, there is. Now, see, they put a pull tab on there. So let's see if I can pull it off. Yeah. See, now that's how to properly. <laughs> I love you, Golden. How easy was that to get off? How easy was that to get off? Now, the other thing that these paint companies need to learn is when they seal a cap, which I love that they seal it, uh, they put a seal, a plastic seal around here, but you almost have to twist or turn or, let's see what, we, let's see. Johnny is doing cool Etsy hops. Thank you, Jersey, at 2 p.m. Eastern on, on Mondays. So she's doing Etsy, Etsy shop hops. Uh, if you want, Jersey, if you want to drop her channel and her Etsy shop, you sure can do that. I'd appreciate it. You put an all-purpose sealer down first. Well, I don't have a sealer other than uh, varnish. I've got a matte varnish. Would that work, Lori? A matte varnish? Would you call that an all-purpose sealer? It's just the Hobby Lobby brand. Let me get it out here. Varnish, could I call that a, a sealer? It's water-based. Thank you, Jersey. There's the link to Johnny Johnny's Junk Journal Shop YouTube video. And I'm sure that she has a link in there to her. All right, we're going to try two things here. Since I'm just learning, and we're going to do it on the bottom, says it's Sticky Art Channel suggested. We're just going to put a little on here, and let me get a clean brush out. I might have a clean brush. Of course I have clean brushes. They just all fly away on me here. Let's use this one. All right, right in here, I'm going to put some GAC. Um, maybe just right in here. We'll put GAC. Ah, uh, gack! Gack, gack, gack! <laughs> Gackity, gack, gack, gack! So I'm just going to put a little... I don't even know how much to put on. We'll just spread it around. And we'll see how that heat sets. Now, I think you're supposed to mix that with some paint. So there it is by itself. We'll mix some with some paint too just for the fun of it just for the fun of it we'll mix some with some paint let's see let's mix it with um maybe a dark red if i can get there um tuscan red that's kind of dark oh. <laughs> all right we'll just leave that like that and see what happens oh terry Terry Cleveland, thank you so much. Terry, send me your your email address. Not your email, your snail mail. Um, let's put just, it said one to one. Thank you, Terry, that is so sweet of you. Aw. Now it says one to one. Oops, I'm almost painted you guys. So let's just take a little of this and mix in here. Let's just mix it. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to put that right here, maybe. And if I don't like this, I'll come back and paint over it. This is just a test. Now I did not, I did not put this over anything. I just painted it right on the purse alone okay now 
This is the GAC. This is the GAC with the Tuscan Red. Let me wash out my brush. Yeah. Okay. So let's put a dab of varnish. That's the closest thing I have to an all-purpose sealer. It's a matte varnish from Hobby Lobby. I'm just going to put a drop on there. Well, maybe a couple drops. And it's finding its way. Now the varnish looks shiny, but it dries matte. Boy, that's a lot on there. Let's see if I can't. Let me pick some of this up. Well, actually, what let's do, let's varnish this. Now, this is still wet here, but I'm going to take some of this Tuscan Red and put it right over the varnish while it's still wet. Probably not the thing you want to do. You probably varnish afterwards, but all right, let me dry this and see if I melt my purse. Hopefully this is, <laughs> hopefully this won't melt my purse. Let me close these things up. Uh, I'll just put it here and put them away later. I have to stand up to put those things away. Let me smooth this out a little. Yeah. All right, here goes. Hold your breath. I'm going to heat set it. I don't know what I'm proving here. I guess I'm proving my purse can take it. I would call that heat set and it's still soft and I think that's going to work. Now I'll probably put more paint on it than that and I'll probably come over and do something on the back. Now I put my hand in the paint. Let's get this off. Ah! Did it land in my lap? Not just. I caught it before it landed on my white t-shirt. <laughs> So I'm going to check that in a little bit and see if it, I'm sure that it's just drying now. Let's throw this wax paper away before I get too wild with it. Okay, I did have a haul from Johnny's last uh, hop that she had, only I caught, I got it from Shelly. Shelly was in the hop. Shelly was in the hop. Just a minute. I have to go set my fan. It went off. I don't know why it went off. I think I probably pulled the plug or something. Let me turn this fan on. I felt it. The minute it went off. Why did you turn off? There we go. Woo! I have that fan blowing on my back. And I felt it the minute it turned off. Okay. Thank you for your patience. So I am going to... I don't think I'm going to do it tonight. Because I'm just not in, in the mood to do it tonight. But I'm going to paint Penelope on that purse. <sighs> And that's what we'll do. And then I'll probably put a varnish over it. Terry Cleveland, send me your 
um, snail mail address. And if you don't know where to send it, I'm typing in my email address here. If I can see where the dot is on this. There we go. Hi, Sharon Marlo. Welcome, welcome, Sharon. Sheila, a.k.a. The Beating Feet. Hi, Sheila. Welcome, Sheila. Holly says she's working on dinner. The Beating Feet. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that sounds like you might have a beating channel. Rhonda says, Laura, this may be mean to say, but I giggle when she tells us something went over the cliff. <laughs> oh. uh, actually, Janice told me to put a piece up here, a cardboard piece, like, like this is my desk here, and to put a piece here, to like this, to catch things from going over. And I might do that. I just haven't gotten around to it yet because I have to... I have to probably move everything off my desk first. But that sounded like a pretty good idea. So Sharon's here. Cheryl's here. Rhonda's here giggling at me. <laughs> brush it out. No puddles. I think I did. I think I did brush it out. I Didn't I smooth it out a little? I think I did. Actually... It's looking pretty good. This was the GAC. This was paint with no, uh, mixed in with the GAC. This was the varnish. And then this was just paint with no varnish. Uh, but you can tell. Look right here where I put that paint. I'm not sure you can see it. But that paint, that paint kind of peeling off here. So you do definitely have to mix your paint. The paint put on by itself is kind of cracking off, right? There's a little hole there. So um, I probably just got a, a big daub of it on there, but it is cracking off there. So don't just paint on it without and thinking you're not going to get. Now, I'm not ultra particular like Lori is because I'm not selling this. Lori, Lori uh, Paint Girly sells things in her in her Etsy shop, and she has to be a lot more particular than I am. But I'll follow her directions. No blobs. <laughs> Smooth it out. No puddles. Rhonda says, Candy, it's been a rough year for my family, too. Oh, Rhonda, I'm so sorry. It will be okay. It could always be worse, so I'm thankful for the problems I have. Oh, Rhonda. Barber Chicken Pot Pie Society says, I saw a great quote. I'm not turning the clock back on November 1 because, seriously, I don't need any more 2020. <laughs> uh, let's not set our clocks back and give us an extra 20, what, an extra hour. We don't need an extra hour. We got an extra hour. We actually got an extra day with leap year. What do we want an extra hour of 2020 for? 2020 is going to go down in our in our uh, generation as being the ultra bad year, huh? Hi, Deborah Brown. Welcome, welcome. Welcome, welcome. Hi, Susan Gerald. Welcome, welcome. Okay, well, I got this book. As I said, I went to, well, um, actually, I saw this. I saw Shelly promote the... Um, her participation in one of Johnny's hops, Monday hops, Etsy shop hops. And I saw her promote this book. And so I ran over and got it. <laughs> I ran over and bought it before anybody else could put their hands on it. 
and I think I got a good deal. I think I got exactly what I want. This came from Shelly, Crafting Mamas. And if somebody wants to put the link to her channel on there, I won't object. <laughs> uh, Shelly is in both my Friday evening hop and she's going to be in the Sunday morning hop. And Shelly's from, uh, don't even ask me to pronounce that name it's w-a-i-l-u-k-u -U, hawaii it's one of those islands but this is a field guide to butterflies let me zoom in a little because this is a smaller book let me stand up and zoom in a little hold on for the ride thank you jersey for putting in Shelly's link to her channel. She's going to be in the Friday night hop and she's going to be in the Sunday night hop. Our Friday night live stream hop is on October 9th and the theme is um, Fitzville Oktoberfest. And there's a, a link to the schedule or link. There's a schedule out on my community tab. And then the Sunday night hop is going to be every fourth Sunday evening and uh, our first theme is I just wanna and then like for me I might say I just want to doodle but I'm not going to doodle so I'm just using that as an example so each one of us and I think there are nine of us in the Sunday night hop I'm really looking forward to it but Shelly is in that hop. So here is the field guide. And when she was showing this, I'm just going, I have to have this book. Because it's got the old tape in there. And it's got, uh, I'm holding it up and you guys can probably see it just fine like this. Um, it's got illustrations. A field guide to butterflies. And you guys, if you have watched me, you know I cannot draw or carve butterflies. But look, there's caterpillars. They're column larva. And then, of course, there's the black and white pictures. And then there's all this underlining. So this is a $5 book. Ooh, there's another. Where did I see that? There's some butterflies. These are black and white, which is okay. Look at that. So I'm not. Oh, I'm going to have a hard time there. I might make this a flip page. So I haven't decided exactly what I'm going to do with this. Um, but it tells about all the different butterflies. Look at that. So I knew I wanted this the minute I saw it. It will probably become a junk journal, and I might just leave it as a junk journal just like this and take out some pages uh, to make it a true junk journal and just leave these pages in. I don't think the pages are stitched. Uh, it doesn't look like they're stitched in. You can usually tell. It looks like these might be glued in. Well, no, they're stitching there. They're stitching right here, so these are stitched in. There are there are thread stitches there, and this happens. So you have to find you have to find your signatures. And it's kind of hard to see the signatures on this, um, but when you find your your middle of your signature, excuse me, I got Tuscan red paint on my hand here. Uh, when you find the middle of your signature, if they're stitched you'll see the thread marks in there. I'm going to clean that red paint off of my hand here. Let's just clean it off. There we go, that's better. So you kind of have to just thumb through. It is stitched, but you, you don't see the threads very well. So, and if you have a stitched book, like this one was, Boy, I find the middle again here. 
uh, usually what happens um, if you tear out one side the other side will come out but the others will stay in and I can't find a it's kind of hard to see where where a stitch is Barbara says, I would say, i got paint on my hand. Mary says, Tuscan red paint. <laughs> well, I can't find a... Is it, I see the... I see it in there, but I don't... It's kind of hard to find. You have to go page by page, and I'm not going to do that here. Page by page until you see the stitch. I just happened to open up to that other one. it in here? No. Ooh. Huh. Well, I can't find it. But when they're stitched, it's just like a composition book. If you take out one page, the, the other side of it will pull out easy, too. So you kind of have to find, like, say, say this was the middle of my stitch. It's not, but say it was. So you might go one down, leave the leave the center part there, pull out this page, and then this page should come out. And I may find find and mark all my here's a stitch signature. So if there's text here, I might go a couple pages down and pull out two, leave that. This is the stitched here, so pull out two here. And I think I'd be okay. So this is the center of the of the stitching. Pull out these two and and these two would come out. But that's that's all I want to show you there. I'm really happy I got this. I'm not gonna do anything with it tonight. Because <laughs> I don't want to mess it up, but I'm in the I'm in the mess up mode tonight. Let's look at chat again, see what you guys are all saying. Pretty specific, huh? <laughs> I would say I got paint on my hand. Let's see. Barbara says, I'm off to see the wizard. Have a good evening, Mary. Bye, Barb. Thanks for dropping in. Be good to that wizard. <laughs> I'm not sure what she means, but... Oh, I had to have a sip of tea. Okay, let's see what else is going on here. You're jealous of that book? <laughs> Aww. Well, I don't know if she just loaded it out there. I have to tell you, it may be a good thing that Johnny's doing those hops because I generally do not go to Etsy shops unless, you know, they're from like like um, Rosemary Morris. I'm following her. I'll go to Shannon's Etsy. I'll go to Lori's Etsy, Pink Girlie's Etsy. Um Crafty Mamas. Uh, it, it has to be somebody I'm watching on YouTube. I don't just go out to Etsy to look for things. I don't say I'm looking for a purse and then go look on Etsy. <sighs> I missed the junk, the junk jaunt this weekend. I didn't go. I didn't go. I stayed home. I was so good. I, <laughs> I can do a junk jaunt from my studio here to the dining room and they get plenty believe me all right deborah brown says good evening i think i'm back to where i was saying hello to everybody and where i put in my okay so the other thing i want to do tonight is i haven't sent i haven't sent my coins off that's all ready to go. Coins are all ready. But what I think I'm going to do now. See, I made a place for a label here. and uh, But I'm not going to. put. I'm just going to drop it in like this. Maybe I'll put her coin in there. But I am going to give her envelopes. Um, and I'm going to make them this big. And I'm just going to stamp owls on them. One, two, three, four. Four. And I don't know, it's the fifth one for her. Five. 
I better I better put six coins in there. I don't know if do you know if she trades if we trade five do we get one of hers? Is that how that goes? Is anybody in I'll have to ask her. I'll do six and then if it's not that I won't send them. But I gotta get these off in the mail tomorrow. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to leave this blank. She can fill in her address and whoever she's sending it to. But I want to put separate envelopes because I want to include... <clears throat> Here's my coin. This is an example of my coin. Not that. Right here is an example of my coin. And see this truck? That truck's in the background and a little black kitty. <clears throat> and the coins are all ready to go. But what I want to do is send her, um, and, and I'll, I'll have this stamped. I'll have it stamped. So what I, what's going to go in here is like this. And I may put another napkin, because I certainly have them here. We'll include another. We'll include a couple napkins. And then I'll put stamps on here, and... Uh, she can just mail them for her house, whoever. That should be enough right there. Maybe I'll do it like... Well, I'm not sure how I'll do it. But that's what I'm going to put in there. So i got to get these ready to go tomorrow. So what I want to do tonight is stamp owls. And I think I'll refresh my stamp pad again here before I start because I was playing over there. And I have some refresher right here. And I need my little swish card. One of them will use this. Hughes, they're trying to get us to buy their high-speed internet. Okay. Just refresh my pad here a little. Let that soak in. stamp and I'm gonna stamp him off can you guys see this right here barely uh, you can see that though right yeah I'll stamp him right here just to test him And so the person who gets my coin will also get a stamped envelope. That's my thought. I would have sent them from my house, but she didn't want to do that. So I'll just send them all to her. You just did what because you were bored? Nothing wrong with regular floss, but custom is the next level. Yeah, um, <laughs> Susan, on the months I mail, I, I drop some cash at the post office. But my my mailing, I haven't been getting my happy mails off. But I don't worry about that because you guys are good to me. You guys, I get, I get more than enough from all you guys. Well, that didn't stamp off good, but I got color book on there. So let's put... Let's put that sheet back on here. Well, this has got that blue dye on. Let's do it this way. I think it'll be okay once I get going. I'm going to zoom out just a teeny bit because I'm done with it. I don't think you guys can see too well. Hold on for the ride. Is Eileen here? Hi, Eileen. 
I'm just getting Happy Mail envelopes ready to go here because if I do it in front of you guys, I get it done. All right, let's see how this works. Of course, that's a dirty envelope. No, no, it's just a little mark. It's okay. We're going to put an owl down here. I want to get these ready to go so that I can... I told Beth I'd be in the mail tomorrow. I promise. It's not October 1st yet. we still got a few days for them to get there. Well, I'm not happy with that. He's going right off to the edge there. I'll save him for me. Let's do that again. See, so you on these, when you carve right out to the edge of your stamp, you want to make sure you get that inked good. I'm not sure I got it inked good, and I'm not sure I stamped it good either. And I'm not the... I'm not the pro. I'm not going to do that one because it's messed. I'll probably pull out ten envelopes before I get what I want. Let me wash the ink off of my hands again here. Nah. Alright, let me try this again. Do, 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 do. Let's see what happens. And I don't want to go clear out to the edge here. The edge of the envelope. I'm moving the stamp in a little. And sometimes I take my pad and give it an even pressure. Did I say hi to you, Lori Loves Montana? I saw your post to, on Facebook of your daughter. She's a pretty girl. All right, let's see how. Let's see how the old owl's coming out. Oh, that's better. I got a little mark in there, but they can cut around the teeth. <laughs> no. From the... From this. Let's try, do I want to put one on back? Will it fit on here? I'm not sure it'll fit. We'll try it. Well, let's try it. Let's not try it on that one. Let's try it on, let's try it on this one I goofed on. See if I can, if, I, if it doesn't fit, I'm not going to stamp it there. One is enough, I guess. I want to see if my owl will fit down in here. This is my test one. Hi, Joyce. 
Hello, hello. Hi, Janet Baum. Welcome, welcome, Janet. Terry, hi, Terry. Welcome, welcome. No, he doesn't quite fit. His ear will, his ear gets popped off. So I don't think I'm going to stamp on the back of these. I'll just stamp on the front. So there's one. <laughs> I'm going to do five of them. I think I want to send six coins to uh, Beth. I think she trades out five and sends us one. I think that, I mean, sends, keeps one. One for her. She sends out five, and I want one to go to her. I don't know how she's doing that. Maybe one of you in the swap can tell me. They're all saying hello. Arlene's here. Hi, Arlene. Welcome, welcome. Well, I'm not happy with the way this edge is stamping. I'm not happy with him. <laughs> Good thing. Pen plus gear envelopes are cheap. We'll keep them for my art journal. That's the one thing I don't like about stamping. I, I have to stamp 10 million times before I get something I'm happy with that I want to give away. I pressed there hard enough. It just wasn't stamping. That edge wasn't stamping. I do have a big stamp of a stack of envelopes. I'm just using Pen Plus Gear, A6 invitation sized. There's 50 of them in here. <laughs> I only want to. I only want to do five. But these, these all these that I've rejected rejected I'll just keep for myself put them in my art journal or something it's on this side where it's not stamping like I want it to that's a little better but still now I know that I can take a marker let's do that just to How can I have so many containers and every one of them is full? How does that happen? <laughs> See, like here, this is the test one again. You can take a marker and just mark like that. And it doesn't hurt if you do that. But it's not the same as the stamped image. I may I may do that on this one and use this one because this one's not too bad. It's still your artwork, but for some reason, well, I know the reason. This goes way out to the edge, and I'm either not getting enough ink on it, or I'm not pressing it down right. We're going to call that two. They don't have to be perfect. They're just happy mail. <laughs> I'm on my third out of five, so hopefully this won't take me all night to do. Hi, Loretta. 
What did she say? You guys, it went by me. Loretta said something. I missed it. It scrolled by me. Loretta. Oh, she's talking to Deborah. You gave the swap more time than I usually would have. However, given the circumstances. I have one of those Tim Holtz stamp pet things someplace. I am working so hard to get organized, but I'm just not there. It may take another year before I get organized. There, that one's clean. Except for this mark. I'm going to leave the marks on there. If there's a mark on there, I'm just going to leave it because generally they'll cut this out anyway. It got a mark from this up here. Now, I've seen Dee Dee just completely cut this negative space away so it doesn't do that. But I'm going to, it's just happy mail. It's just happy, happy mail. Napkin swap went postal. I don't know what that means. If you sent it, took it to the post office, or if it was a really good swap. <laughs> Hopefully it was just a really good swap. I have to watch myself on swaps. I can get I can get too com over committed with swaps just like I can with happy mail. If I do one swap like I'm doing these coins and finish it before I join another swap, I'm okay. And usually I get my swaps out in the mail a lot more consistently than I do regular happy mail because I know I've committed to them and I I don't want to you know because I receive back on my swaps well I receive back on the happy mail too but you know you want to stay committed that one went pretty good it's got some black marks in there but I don't know I wipe them off, but they still get black in there. I'm just going to leave them. Little black marks. We'll blame it on the post office. <laughs> oh, see? That's how I get marks. Slam that... P slam the p ink pad down on my little finger. Now it's all yucky. And of course it goes underneath your fingernail. It does just doesn't go on top of your fingernail. So to get the fingernail cleaned out, you gotta go scrub it with a fingernail brush. Otherwise it looks like you got filthy fingernails. Just cannot win. You just cannot win. That's why I say I do not do perfect pristine art. Some people do. Their art just, you know, it's clean. It's got clean lines or it's not a speck on it. I do my art. I get mess here, a speck there. Let's call it distressed. <laughs> and that's generally, I just got to the point to where I don't worry about, well, when I do happy mail, I do kind of. 
I want my things to be as nice as possible, but, you know, see? Now, I know I pressed on that. That's a reject. I'm not sending that out. I should have, uh, I don't know. I know he's got ink on him there. Jersey says she thinks stencils are versatile. <laughs> Julie says somebody, someone tell me you have too many stencils. Don't buy any more. <laughs> They're telling her to go get that from another group. It's not going to work in here. <laughs> we'll say buy that one. Get that one. Buy that one. There. That's a little better. But see, I get mess in there now. It's just going to be messy. Maybe I'll draw a little leaf over that. I want, I want to do one more. Let's draw a leaf or something over. Maybe a little flower on my little marks. We'll make the best out of a bad situation. Let's do one more owl, and then I'm going to quit. One more good one, I mean. <laughs> All right, Mr. Hootie Owl. Loretta says, try inking the stamp, then put the paper on top of that and rub from the top side. We'll try that. Not on this one, because I don't want to pick it up, because I'll mess it up. That one went pretty good. All right, let's try what Loretta said. I'll try it on this one. I got a little mark up there. So ink the stamp. Put the paper on top of that and rub. Let's do it this way. I don't know if I'm doing exactly what she said, but I'm doing what I understood that she said. That came out pretty nice, didn't it? That came out pretty nice. I might try stamping like that, but I'm not going to go redo all of these. These are pretty good. It's got little marks in the corner that I'm just going to draw a little flower. We'll draw a little flower here. <laughs> They'll never know it was a mistake. <laughs> What's that? Right up there in the corner. It's a flower, can't you tell? They can cut around it if they don't like it. This one is especially bad. Mary's disguising her mistakes. 
So there's two. This one's got a markup in there. Maybe I'll use this one. It's got a mark over there. Well, no, I'll just leave it for now. I don't like that mark there. So they're all in the same place. So that tells me I need to go back to my stamp and uh, carve out that a little bit more. But I'm not going to do that tonight. This one just has a teeny one. I'll bet we know why Mary put a flower there. <laughs> this one is didn't quite get enough ink right in there. All right, we're going to leave it like that. And then I'm going to take these and I'm going to pre-stamp the I'll have to wait have them wait at the post office. But I'm going to give her this these and one, two, three, four, five. And what I don't know is if she keeps one and trades out four, does she, I think you send in five and get five back, but that doesn't give her one. So I thought I had another one of these. But I don't see it here. I oh, might have only made six. I thought I made seven. Wait, is he hiding? I don't see him here. I might just be sending her five because... Um, I think she only asked for five. I wanted to send one to Becky. I'll have to clear my whole desk off. But we'll we'll figure that out. And this is all going to go in a big envelope with one, two, because I've got all of these I'll never use all those napkins I might use some around Thanksgiving next year they'll be here for next year and then I was going to give her some of these because they're pretty I would use these but one, two, three, four, five. Six. So all of this is going to go off to, to Becky Becky. With maybe, I mean not Becky, Beth. And uh, I have to find my other coin. There's six of them there, but I thought I had one. I thought I had seven. And I'm sure not seeing it over here. Oh well. All right, let's get this off my desk. I'll pa I'll finish finish it up tomorrow tomorrow, packing it all up and everything, figuring out what I'm doing here. Oh, there's the other one. I knew I had another one. All right, I've got seven. That's what I wanted. All right, that'll all go off to Beth, Beth Schuler tomorrow. Let's see what you guys are saying in chat. Oh, I wanted to show you. Here's the... Uh, what I did with that wax paper. Did I throw it away already? This is my towel. I want to pull this out again. Here's that ribbon. 
that I put in that Butterfly PT, and here's the original here. So I did dye it sort of a light greenish color. Um, it did dye it, but I, w I don't think I had my tea strong enough. That's the end of that. I could have put all of that in there. So it did color it. So I'm just going to let this dry. It's kind of like a light green to me. It's certainly not blue. I'm just going to let it dry. I'm going to put it over here and keep this out. All right. Let's see what you guys are saying out there. Mary stamping her owl. Please remember... Oh, thank you, Janet. What did Joyce say? That sounds delicious. Hi, Keisha. Keisha said, yes, Lori, same here, just in a skillet. You've been creating with napkins yourself, too, lately. Oh, cool. Cool. Lori says, my uh, BF, I, I take that to be best friend, cooks the cube steak and then puts them in the crock pot with onions, mushrooms, and cream of mushroom soup. Ooh, that sounds good. Mmm. Hi, Kendra. Welcome, welcome. It's so much fun to create with napkins. And do you know what I've found lately? I have a lot of fun doing. And, of course, if you watch my channel, you know. Painting on the backs. Painting on the backs. Let's do a Penelope. Let's do a Penelope since I'm into... Let's paint some, some Penelopes on the back of this. And you would be surprised... You would be surprised, that might be too much, uh, how easy it is to fussy cut these once the, that uh, they're painted. Uh, acrylic paint sort of forms a base. Let's see, I need red and yellow and brown. Red and <laughs> yellow and no we'll use gold i think i mixed my brown with red and green we're going to use this even though it's gloss maybe we won't maybe we'll use this instead um what else do i need white 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 Here's some auburn. We're going to paint, I'm going to paint some Penelope's. And what else do you have on there? You've got pink and silver. I filled up my carousel here. <laughs> and now I just keep twirling it around saying, where did I put my white? Where did I put my black? There's the juicy black. I don't think I've opened this one yet. I might have. It's got black spots on it. And this white is... We've got the buttermilk. We'll use the buttermilk. Alright. And we need some waxed paper. Do, 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 do. Waxed paper right here. We should have put waxed paper on the underneath. I think I will. And one for a palette. And let's move my ink pads. And my stamp goes over here. And let's move my paint. And Penelope can pose. And we're just going to paint some Penelope's on here. I might put Penelope in my snow globe. <laughs> 
Anne suggested doing a snowman with a paintbrush. I might do a Penelope with a paintbrush. I don't know. We shall see. I'm making room. I'm going to have to move you guys off on top of the waste basket. You're not in it. You're on top of it. But I need room to work here. I don't need this anymore. Let's get it off. I don't need my glue. My glue, I was using it the other night, and I didn't get that cap on there good. I need to clean out that cap. Yep. That's why it's... All right, so there's my napkin. It's just the one layer. The one layer of a napkin back that I pulled off of a... Looks like a six by six napkin. And I have some doodads from, these actually go on one of my little journals. This looks like a, a little piece that Sharon Marlowe sent me. And the fan's blowing my napkin around. Okay. So let's start off with some red because that's what I'm liking. And I'm just going to paint straight craft paint on here. Oh, my needle needs to go. Can you guys see? I think you can. All right. So we're just going to kind of paint draw her. Right now, she's got a lot of pins in her. So, I probably will not be painting her with that many pins. She's got some bling hanging off of her back. So, I'll put her to the side here. I think you guys can see her there. And I'm going to start painting her here. I kind of know how she looks. And I don't want her too large. I just want to do multiples of her. So, we're just going to... This is her pin cushion right here. Kind of a Tuscan red. And then she's got, let me hold her up here. A fan is blowing my. She's got a brown, you can't see it very well because she's got all these pins in her, but this, this reddish brown is the base of the pin cushion. And then she's got this brown kind of velvety hat up here. And she's got dark, dark eyes. She's kind of an Art Deco style doll. So I'm going to paint her hat kind of up in here. And I paint her several times and she looks different every time I paint her. <laughs> and... here and let's give it a let's give it so that the white will show up let's give this a bluish background and then I'll be painting the white feathers around her Getting pretty empty of that. I didn't mean to use this brush. I'm not going to use... I use this brush for watercolor. I didn't mean to use that one. Let's use a different brush. Let's use this one. And I need to clean out my brushes again. Yes, I do. Alright, we're just going to paint a blue blue around her this way. This is sort of like the ATCs that I painted. Remember that canvas that I painted? I still want to take it to the library and get it printed off. Now, all of this will have white coming out for her for her 
white feathery fancy stuff. This is not hair. I guess you could call that a boa. Whatever. But it this blue will have all that white streak coming out around it. But it, it I got to have a blue background or some sort of a black background so it'll show up. So you can paint on napkin backs is why I'm showing this. I painted sunflowers and of course sunflowers are very easy to paint. This I'm taking a little bit more time with. Yeah. We'll just make her float in a square of blue for right now. I don't know if I want that to totally be like that. Let's get some green out. See, but that acrylic paint, even the craft paint, builds up a layer. And it does kind of stick on the back, but when it dries, it pulls off. I, I haven't had trouble pulling it off. You have to pull gently. You can't just rip it up. All right. Now let's wash that out. And let's buttermilk her face. Let's use this with the buttermilk kind of a cream color it's kind of sh I shook it up but I guess I didn't shake it up enough so we're just going to kind of paint her face in here and we're going to do some more red around her body but I'm just getting her in right now, kind of blocking her in. Let's go back to her. Let's go back to this. There. Now give her that hat comes down a little bit more like that oh yeah she's starting to look snazzy now now she has you can't see it very well I know it's there she's got kind of a lacy neck collar around her neck it's kind of a well oh it's aged we'll call it an aged lace you can't see it very well I know it's in there but I poked so many things around her. Yeah, she says, you've certainly poked me a lot, Mary. <laughs> so I'm going to take a little bit of this buttermilk. And I don't know if I mix it with this. It might turn a... Yeah, it, yeah it's kind of a pinkish color. Now let's put some more of this. And let's mix a little of... I don't know if that green will... Yeah. That green kind of makes it a tan color. Um, green and red will make brown, but I mixed white with that. And so it kind of makes it a tan, tannish color. And I'm just going to kind of give her a lace collar around here. That The same with, with her in real life. It'll probably get all covered up. So there we go with that. Now I think I want to dry it a little. I think I'm going to hit it with the heat gun.
Now, if I put her in a snow globe, though, she would not be probably very detailed because that snow globe is only, it's only going to be the size of an ATC coin that I was showing you with those caps. So I'd have to paint her a lot smaller. Now she needs some bright red. She needs some bright red. Ah, let's get some bright red. Bright red. That's the Tuscan red. This is that was Tuscan red, but this looks a lot brighter. This is Apple Barrel Tuscan Red. Look at that. What I have on there is Apple Barrel Tuscan Red, and this is Deco Art Tuscan Red. Same thing, Tuscan Red. Tuscan Red. Their red is a lot more brownish red, which is okay. I don't care what it's called. I like the tone, and I like the tone for that. But I need a little bit brighter red. I need a, a cherry red. Now let's compare. This is... Now I think this Tuscan red is brighter than their cherry red. It's about the same if you look at the bottom here. But I think that's brighter even. Now... I seem to like the Tuscan reds. I got Georgia Clay. What do I have over here? I thought I had a cherry red. I got a Santa red. This is the Santa red. And this is the Tuscan red. But I think that's brighter yet. Santa red looks pinker to me. If you look at these two. Doesn't that look brighter? I think I'll try this. I thought I had a bright red though. I have this, which is a bright red. <laughs> And this is the Tuscan red. This looks prettier to me. I'm going to stick with that. Alright, we'll just stick with that for now. I'm just going by what I see on the bottom of the bottle. Looks like I spilled white paint on this. And what I'm going to paint, here again, you can't see it very well. I've got a little red cloth going across here that I put my scissors in to form sort of like a little scissors holder. But I bought a whole bunch of pins. I was out of straight pins, so I really plastered her with straight pins. So she's all decked out in straight pins. Let me get the plug out here. Oh yeah, that's a brighter red. Let's go ahead and paint the little... fabric square on here. I might even mix it with a little, let's mix it first, a little pinkish color here. That's just a little scrap of fabric on her to That's almost too pink, but we're going to let it be the back in the background. It fades away when I heat it. It fades away. Let's hit it with the let's hit it with this bright red now. I'll probably outline it with my black. So she's got a pair of silver scissors. She's got a pair of silver scissors, and I don't know about silver. I don't know. I have 
to go to my either my light blues or I might have or metallic and I don't like to use a lot of metallic I've got a shimmering silver here let's try this but it's a metallic and can you hear how juicy that is even when I shake it up it seems like it's so juicy to me I'm just going to try to put the scissors in here. This little silver scissors. And then they, they ride through the little deal and then they come out the end here. And I'll probably have to outline them with my pen once this is just all in the background. Once I get going here, I'll outline it with the... Uh... With the black pen, and that will show some detail. And her lace collar is going to cover up that scissor handle, it looks like. <laughs> Give her lace in there. Alrighty. Now, the background's pretty flat, but I don't mind with that. I guess I could take a little of this green and mix it with some blue. Maybe a little of this Tuscan red. And put in some. I'm just experimenting. I'm not sure that's what I want, but that's what I got. That paint's on there pretty thick, but I think once it dries, it'll peel up. All right, now I'm ready to I'm not going to put her face on until I put it on with an ink pen. I might put her lips on there. Yeah, let's try. Let's try it. I might have to paint them out. I don't know. That's not going to work with that brush. I need a teensy weensy one. And they hide from me over here. Teensy wincy brush. Here we go. That's better. It's still a little fluffy, but it's better. She's got heart shaped lips. Now, I'll draw her eyes on there with a pen, but what I want to do for the hair. I, it's not hair, it's the white part, the fluffy part. Let's get it out here. My white fine liner. That's green, white. So I'm just showing you guys how you can paint on a napkin bath. That's the reason I'm doing this. Oh, there goes my waste basket. Good thing I emptied it the other day. I put too much stuff on it. And I leave it one side open so I can tuck stuff in it. You guys fell off on the floor. And I'll pick you up. I hope I didn't put anybody in time out. I don't think I did. All right, we're going to take this. I might have to improve those scissors a little more, but I'm going to take my fine liner. I 
Let's make sure it's going. And see all her white fluffy around here? That's what I'm going to do, I think. Now, I get too much stuff around me. I can't work. So I just start doing these lines around here. Makes her feel elegant. And some turn out better than others, but generally by the time I'm done, I'm okay with them. And I can even bring them, they fall, sometimes they see they fall way down over this way, they fall all over her back, get a little matted on her back because I've been sitting her on, in the, I've been sitting her down like that. Let's see if I can't bring this around a little more. You kind of have to let this dry too. Now scissors has fallen into the background, but we're going to let it fall back there. And let's put some gold or yellow, I think, pin heads. Let me put this fine liner lid back on. I usually, when I put my fine line lid back on, I usually make sure that my nozzle is. But you should take it out in the kitchen and wash it out. How often do I do that? <laughs> now I see, as I'm looking at this, there's a big blob of white paint right there. And this is kind of one of those slanted brushes that you can kind of get rid of that blob a little. I might come back in and draw around that. We're just going to leave it like that for now. I'm not sure I'm happy with that. Now I want to get out some yellow. Put that yellow right in there. Yep, that's really too much. And we're just going to dot some pinheads on there. Now let's let it, let's, uh, I'll dry it, but I'll have to let it dry before I can draw on it.
And when I draw on it, it's pretty much in the background now. When I draw on it, I'll bring out the detail. Let's move this paint for a minute. I'll move it over here for a second. I want to see. You have to be kind of careful, but it should come up. I'm using wax paper. Let's tear this here. Now, generally, I'd use, I'd let this whole thing dry. Dry good. Set it overnight. But since I'm kind of in a hurry here, I'm going to try to take it off. And I generally don't cut, cut it like this. I just pull the whole napkin off. Let's see if I can get this up. That's not dry. I'm going to let it dry because it needs to dry. <laughs> but it will pull up. It will pull up like it started to over here where it's dried. It will. This part down here isn't dry. But it will pull up like this does. And you would be surprised how easy once you get it pulled off of your base, you would be surprised how easy it is to fussy cut around them. I fussy cut those sunflowers out really nice. It's not dry yet, but it will pull up. You can see this part here is pulling up, but it, there's some wet spots in there. So I'm just going to let it air dry. Ah, Penelope, thank you for posing. I don't know where her, her little chair went. Here it is, way over here. I call this her throne. <laughs> Put her in here. Let's get these out, off. And I'll come back in with my felt tip pen and detail that. Let me put my paint away. Yellow in the yellow. And I'll probably put the gold there too. And red in the red. Blue in the blue. That's blue. This is blue. This is blue. Brown in the brown. Silver and buttermilk. And black and green. And that's my fine lighter and sprays. Black. Mm. All right. Mary's... Mary's done playing with that. <laughs> Let's wash my brushes out a little. You guys get to participate in my cleanup here. That one's clean. I probably give real artists the heebie-jeebies if they watch me. What is she doing? I am so impatient. I am so impatient.
I don't know if it would stick this bad to a, a, a regular paper. I guess I'll have to test and see. But I feel like it comes off of a wax paper better than it would a regular paper. If I have to tear anything, I'll tear the wax paper part and let the wax paper be on the back. Because that won't hurt it. Like, here, let me show you. If I collage it down, let's just cut all this off here. Get this out of my way so I can work with it. And if I'd leave this all night, it would be better. It'd be easier to pull off. I'm, I'm too impatient when I'm streaming. But it's pulling off pretty good. It just has to be dry. There. I pulled off pretty good. Now I'm wondering if I can go in with my pen. We shall see. We shall see. I need to find a good one. I just pulled one out the other morning. Those are flat ones. This one? Get her out of here again. So you guys can see her. So I just start detailing around her. And with these pen plus gears, I can pretty much draw over acrylic. Um, not all, not always. You, your p acrylic paint needs to be dry. And your pen needs to be juicy. <laughs> Let's see if I can't get those scissors in there better. This is the tip of the scissors down here. Now, why do her on a napkin instead of a regular piece of paper? Well, depending on what you're working on. Now, I don't know about Penelope here, but those sunflowers I put on my postcard. And I would much rather collage down a napkin than a, a paper on a postcard. And I'm just doing this to show that you can you can paint on a napkin bat pretty good with acrylic paint. I'm not too happy with my white in here. And I'm not sure detailing it with black will help, but we'll see. Might break up some of this area in here.
and then this this is ruffle in here and gave her her collar back now she has on here she has a tag that Mina made for her a little scissors tag I didn't get that on there and she's got this crocheted pink flower and I think Violet made that but I put that on her hat but I don't have that on there and she's got needles and pins that I don't have in here but I'm not sure I can get them all in Let's see if I can, I'm not sure, sure how this finer one will work on there, this square one. It's a fine point. Looks pretty good. Might work better than what I thought. Oops, kind of tore it there. I mean, you can play with this all you want. <laughs> I think I'm pretty happy with her. She's got another little red. She's got a little birthmark right over here on her cheek. And I usually put another little red heart there. I think I'm just going to draw a little heart. If I can. We'll leave it white. And sometimes I put another heart, a yellow heart, up here. On this red piece. Sometimes I'll put a red heart in there. Let's sign this. I think I'm done with it. 927? Is it the 27th today? 2020. There she is. I'm going to call her done. For painting on a napkin back. For painting on a napkin back. Oh, you guys are covered up with wax paper. <laughs> no, you're just a, a blue screen. I don't know. Let's plug you back in here. Flip, 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 flip. Come on, flip. Oh, and maybe I need to flip. I love when you do Penelope, Mary. Aw, oh, thank you, Jersey. October 5th. There's so much that you can do. Yeah, we're really looking forward to our live stream hop. I think you guys are going to thoroughly enjoy what's going to happen. I think you guys are going to thoroughly enjoy it. Thank you, Riri. Thank you so much. Ah, oh, thank you, Branson. Thank you so much. You guys are kind of seeing her at a distance. I see her closer up, so I see, when you look at her from a distance, she looks good. But, you know, just like any other piece of art, when you see something close up, you see where, oh, maybe I should have put more there, or maybe I should have, you know. I see her, if you could see her close up, you'd see her differently. Hi, Suze. Welcome, welcome. Hi, Holly. Aw, oh, thank you. Hi, Keisha, she says, hope everybody has a wonderful night. Keisha does. Bless, 
blessings to each and every one. See you again soon. Take care, everyone. Ah, oh, thank you, Keisha. Thanks for dropping by. Would somebody drop a link? Did we drop a link to Keisha's channel? Would somebody drop a link to Keisha's channel? Her next live sale is going to be October 2nd, which is this coming Friday. And I think she said at 2 p.m. Uh, Eastern. Oh, she'll have it posted on there, on her channel. If one of the mods would run and get Keisha, Keisha's, Keisha's Creations. K-I-E-S-H-A-K-K-R-E-A-T-I-O-N-S. Oops. Oops, I hope I didn't do anything. Uh, what else am I missing here? Uh, ha, Deborah says, I have a nice personality. Sounds better still, but we all know what that means. <laughs> Janet dropped a link to the Fibsville Friends Facebook group. And if you join, be sure to answer the questions. She dropped a link to um, my channel, which has the community tab where I've got the schedule. There's Taz. Hi, Frank. Taz is Frank. I think Taz was her kitty cat, right? Was it Taz a kitty cat and didn't, didn't he pass away? Am I wrong there? I get you all mixed up. Susan says, Susan Gerald says, a couple days ago, the grandkid asked me my name. He's six, and I told him, and he said, that's a funny name, Susan. <laughs> Kids. <laughs> you should tell him his name is funny. Let's see. Allie Kay said, did she make that with crayon? No, this is acrylic paint. In fact, I got some over here that I want to smear in my dictionary here in a minute. Keisha, you and Aaron are the only ones that call me shoe shine. <laughs> I didn't know anybody called you shoe shine. There's Lisa. Hi, Lisa. Lisa, my eclectic life. Lisa and Tanya were on this afternoon, but I have to tell you, I, I kind of spaced out my afternoon. Uh, I didn't do much. I just sat in my recliner. I finished knitting the knitting part of my scarf. I was knitting. Um... And now I'm I'm just about have it. I've only got 32 stitches across, but it's really long. It's about six feet long, and I'm a beginner knitter. But I'm I I was doing the casting off when my brother called me to supper, and then I my knitting needle dropped out of the <laughs> the sign that had off the side the the part. The knitting needle that had the last half of my stitches of that row on there. And I was trying to get them all back. And he was calling me to supper. And I was going, ah, help me out in a minute. I've got to put all my stitches back on. But I'm ready. I think I'm going, I have enough yarn left. I think I'm going to crochet around the edge. Just a, a single crochet. We'll see. Hi, Carla. Did I say hello to you? And let's see. Susan Sharon was here. Oh. She said goodbye. Norma's here. Frank was here. <laughs> yeah, the... Now, Keisha's gone, but she said it, it looks like that paint is going to be heavy on the backing. See, but the paint gives it a pretty firm layer. You have to be careful when you take it off. You saw how carefully I pe peeled this off. But uh, it, uh, it soaks into that napkin. This is just a one-layer napkin back. And, but it's surprising. Let's get this scissor piece. It's surprising how easy this cuts. I'm just going to cut around the edge here. Because you're just cutting the... And when you cut like your flowers or something out, it it uh, cuts pretty easy. Now, real detailed cutting, I wouldn't do real detailed work on this. I mean, fussy cutting. You might be able to. But it cuts pretty easy.
and it collages down pretty easy. Now this is this is acrylic paint. I didn't get this cut even. Where do I want to take it off on this side? No, I think I'll take it off on this side. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's just a demo. There we go. And then I can put that in my art journal if I want. Which happens to be right here. I should have done her in autumn colors, but let's let's collage her down. Let's collage her on a postcard. Maybe I'll try sending her to myself. Let's just collage her on a postcard here and see how she goes through the mail. Now, the reason I started painting on napkin backs is because I was doing those sunflowers and I was I had painted some yellow, just painted a nap, napkin back yellow. And uh, then I cut out each petal. And I that got pretty tiresome all of a sudden. And so I started uh, I just painted the entire sunflower all at once. But I did that to collage on, so that I could collage on my postcards. <laughs> Happy mail that I have sitting over in the corner. All right, let's just collage her down. And I'm just going to use my school glue. School glue is what I use. I'm not too particular when it comes to this. Um... It may eventually turn a little yellow after a couple years, but for me, I don't really care because I just figure that will age it. <laughs> It'll just add to the... I think I got to clean this brush a little. It's got some blue in it. I love these brushes that Sue sent me. I'm still working on the first package. <laughs> I know I'm supposed to use one to paint with and one to glue with, but I, I generally use, use it to glue or paint and wash it out and use it to glue or paint. All right, let's throw this away. All right, let's just collage it down here. Let's clodge her down. I don't think there's anything on there that's water soluble. Let's give that a, a dry with my heat gun. Let's pull this. Penelope, I'm going to have to move you. And I'll fold this in half. And let's get... Hold her down while I'm doing it. And I think she'll go through the mail pretty good. Now, I could paint right on the postcard. And if I was doing Penelope, I might just paint her right on the postcard. 
but the purpose of this is just to demonstrate that you can paint on a napkin back and cut it out and collage it on. I think she needs some sunshine around her. She needs some sunshine. Let's, let's get out some sunshine. Let's do some King's Gold. Let's, let's get this out. I'm going to move you guys again. And let's use the sponge. I'm going to send her back to myself just to uh, see how she mails through the mail. She's still kind of wet here, but when she dries, and I'll put her under some books, and that'll flatten her out. Oh, looks like I had some some non sunshine on here. Should have had a clean. Oh, well, it's just coming back to me. It's just coming back to me. See, that's what I say. I can't do perfect work. Now, if you were doing this for somebody else and you wanted just gold in there, you would have gotten you out a brand new clean sponge. But not Mary. Not Mary. I don't like that. Oh, Mary, 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 Mary. I don't know if I can get it up. It comes up everywhere except for where I want it to. All right. Well, that's okay. We'll just... You know what I feel like doing now? <laughs> Let's get out a stencil. Let's do some playing. Where's my squares? Come on. Don't be stubborn. No. What stencil around her? All right, let's see what damage I did. <laughs> well, now let's dry that and draw a black line around the rectangle. You see, I get to playing. I get to playing and there we go. I'm off doing something else now. I think I'm done with the yellow. 
Let's dry this a little. needs to be flattened with a under a book or something to flatten it out now let's draw I want a black line around here and around the edge and I'm not sure my big markers are my wide markers are juicy enough and of course they're down at the bottom If they're in here, <laughs> where they go off to? Huh. Well, let's find a juicy one. This one should be fairly juicy. So all this was was a napkin back on here. It kind of feels like it's kind of in, um, I don't want to say padded, but sort of padded. I don't want to say embossed. It's sort of padded with that on there, but it needs to be flattened off. I'm pretty happy with that. Now let's just go around the edge. And since it's just coming back to me, I'm not being too awful particular. Let's show it on a white show it on white here so you can see it a little better. Pulled all those pins out of that tray. <laughs> My palette on. A little damp yet from that glue, I suppose. Mary's got to play. It looks like I picked up some of the yellow paint there. I'm going to leave it. I'm going to leave it scratchy in there because I don't want to mess it up. I think my stencil picked up some of that yellow when I lifted up the stencil. the lid. Put all those pins back. 
I get too many out. wiped my name away too. Let's put my name back. Oops, there's my wide one. Let's go back over this with my wide one. Just gotta play. Just gotta play. That's what's so fun. Are you guys in the mood for doing a list? I need a list. Um, October 1st is coming up, I think, next Thursday. And I have no idea what I'm going to do for Inktober. I'd like to do a series. Or maybe... Uh, a, a four short series, one series a week. So if you guys can give me some ideas, don't start now. But I think I'll do a list tonight. What'd I do? Did I smear? No, I'm okay. And this was really Arlene's suggestions. Because I was saying, I don't know what I'm going to do for, uh, for uh, uh, Inktober. And she said, why don't you do a list, Mary? And have the fibs tell you what to do. And I thought that was a pretty good idea. So, let me smear this paint in my dictionary. And we'll do a list. I'll keep this napkin back. <laughs> you might need it before the night's over. Let's put the glue back on my glue pot. <coughs> Yeah, let's get my dictionary. Where is it? It's here close because I looked for it before I sat down. Did I not? Uh-oh. Well, I might just smear it on a piece of paper. Isn't that funny how you think you have things out and ready to go and you don't really <laughs> I'll smear it on a piece of paper and I'll put it in my journal I just don't want to waste it here we'll smear it on the back of this because this is going to go in a journal anyway we'll smear it here much on here to smear. There's some reds. That's silver all over me. That'll be the beginning of something ominous. Pretty yucky looking. And I'm just going to put it behind me and let it dry. I am in a mood to do a list of things that I can do for October. And I think what I think I want to do is not do a 30-day series. I have trouble doing 30-day series. Uh, I don't. I don't get them done. <laughs> so maybe if you get. Uh, and I was working on Becky's. Now I got Becky's autumn. I got all of the first week done, and about well, three, four done for the second week, and then the third and fourth week here have just gone by the sock wayside 
So let's get you guys out. Mary, hold Penelope up to the camera so that we can see her. Oh, okay, hold on. Hold the phone. Let me flip the, the tablet here. Hold the phone. Let me stand up. Can you see her there? Right here, she's got a heart. She's got a heart on her cheek. And I might paint that red. I usually paint that red. That, she's got a birthmark on her cheek. Uh, let me show. Here, here is the real Penelope here. And see right there, she's got a birthmark. But look how dark her eyes are. And if you could see her eyes, you might be able to see. But her eyes, I call them flirting eyes because... Her eye, her eyeballs are both looking over that way. I'm not sure. There, you can kind of see it with her, with her eye there. So she's she's kind of pretty in her own way. So when I draw Penelope, I always put her eyes looking that way. And of course, I outline her in black. Here, she's got a see her. Her, all of her, because she's a pin cushion doll, her, her, the pin cushion comes right up to her neck. She really doesn't have a neck. And so I don't draw her with a neck. And she's pretty basic drawing. But there she is. You could do a lot more with this. Like, I'm wanting to go in and outline each one of those little squares with white or something, but I think it would take, we, even with black, would take away from the focus of on her. Um, it would probably be better to push all of these squares in the background now, but I'm not going to mess with it anymore. That border really makes her pop. Really? You like the border? <laughs> I'm going to... I'm going to varnish her, but I'll do that. I'll do that later. I want to, I want to do a list. Um, doesn't have to be a big list. I want some suggestions. Let me get my journal out here. I want some suggestions on things that I can do. Weekly series. Now in October, let me look at the calendar. Hold on. Let me flip to a page. I think this is all full here. Let's put it on the back. And I think this one is almost full. Not quite. Uh, let's, let's work on this page here. For the list. So I'll put these back over here. And October has... <sighs> yeah... Do, do, do September. So, if you go by the weeks, if you count the first three days as a week, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, it has one, two, three, four, five weeks. So, I'm going to ask, and the first one that I choose, you're going to give me. Five, you're going to give me a list of things, uh, of series that I can do. Like, now I'm just going to use Dee Dee's, but don't, don't, I won't do Dee Dee's. Uh, hers is an example. I think she's going to do insects. And if she's going to call it Insectober or something like that. So, let me get out a sheet of paper. I'm always having to get scratch paper out. <laughs> I'm going to have to buy another ream of white paper. Yeah. So don't say anything till I get get settled here. Because I'll never be able to keep up with you if you get going on me. So this is a, a list of Inktober ideas. Inktober P O B E R. Um, I'm going to put series ideas. That I know what it means. Is today the 28th or the 27th? I keep today's the 27th. 9, 
27, 20, 20. Let's clear out all my... All right. So now I'm ready. If you plan to carve December, it would need to turn the Inktober drawings into stamps. Yeah. I kind of want to do that. I was wanting to do that with um, the 29 faces. Um, Ayala Art did that with the 29 faces in September. But I wasn't able to keep up. I just I did two and I wasn't able to keep up. So maybe with Inktober I will carve them for... I'm not going to do carve December. I'm going to do carve November. <laughs> because I want to do the December daily. And I don't want to have two 30-day 30, 30 series going in December with all the holiday stuff. All right. Fall leaves. Dirty dozens. <laughs> How am I going to ink over? Uh, well, I guess... I guess that we could do a dirty dozen and pick things from the dirty dozen. I'll put it down. This is for ink. Oh, we could do an Inktober dirty dozen. That's interesting. And do the dirty dozen in all ink. Oh, I love that idea. The more I think about it, Riri. Hi, Dawn. Welcome, Dawn. Let's make a mess today. Would somebody drop a link to Dawn's channel? Let's make a mess today. I don't get over there as much as I'd like to, Dawn. I'm going to have to be more my... I don't get around as much as I used to. I'm getting old. Autumn walks. What you see on a walk. Autumn walks. Now, you mean I have to go for a walk? <laughs> Autumn walks, okay. What you see on a walk. I like that idea. Harvest themes. Preserves, haystacks, bu bushels. Okay, harvest themes. Now, I only need five, so I might number these and let Random Org pick out five for me. Pumpkins, gourds, and squash. Country roads. That's a good idea, Becky. Let's see. A barn. A barn. Thank you, Jersey. Thank you. So I could put barns. I like barns, too. Barns would be fun to carve. Um, country roads. If you guys haven't found Let's Make a Mess today, be sure and check her out. She's fun to listen to. Uh, Jer um, well, Jersey is fun to listen to, too. Um, those gals, you know, if, if you're just sitting at your desk arting, and you, if you just want to hear, hear somebody talking about art in the background or talking, Jersey and, um, uh, and Dawn at Let's Make a Mess Today are good channels to go to. Now, Aunt Beck... I can't just sit and listen to Aunt Beck. I have to do what she's doing. <laughs> a dirty dozen or... Well, no, I can listen to her talk about sewing because I'm not a sewer. But uh, but I have to stop and watch Aunt Beck. <laughs> Let's see. Country roads. 24-pound paper. For the, for the Inktober. Yeah, I'm not doing my Inktober in my journal, but I'm writing, I'm writing my ideas down on here. But I always put a piece of paper behind just to keep, if it, this doesn't seem to be soaking through so bad, but sometimes it soaks through pretty bad. I'm not sure what she meant with 24 pound paper. She probably meant for the ink. Fibsville people. Fibsville people. <laughs> Fibsville people. The thing about Fibsville people is if I do them for Inktober, then you get how I see them in my head. And I think when I tell the story, you know, it's like reading a book or hearing a story told to you 
like when we talk about destiny, you know, destiny as a young blonde, uh, 24 year old. Now, while you picture a young blonde 24 year old, it's not going to be the same as how I pictured. I did a sketch of destiny off of a reference photo, but but uh, not all of us, when you listen to stories, you know, you see all these pictures in your head of how you picture. It's like it's like seeing somebody on the Internet and then meeting them in real in real life and seeing what they really look like. <laughs> all right. A pumpkin patch. We got pumpkins, but we could do a pumpkin patch. Pumpkin patch. Red trucks. A series of red trucks. Hmm. I kind of like that. Mums. Hi, Angie. County fairs. Now this is all going to be in ink, so I can, it isn't, if I carve, I can kind of carve the shapes and everything. But if I'm doing ink, you know, I can, I generally get illustrative and uh, painty with my ink. So county fairs might be fun to do too. What did I like to, let's see, what did I say? The I like the Dirty Dozen. I like the Autumn Walks. I might have to do some walks on YouTube. <laughs> okay, I don't go out walking a lot around here. Uh, dogs kind of scare me. Country barns would be fun to do. Red trucks. County fair. Apples. Good carb apples. Red trucks. I got red trucks. I love red trucks. Fall vegetables. Now I only need five, and I think I'll let Random Org pick them for me. Scarecrows, mushrooms and forest stuff. Mushrooms. And I'll put for, forest flora. And forest flora. Indian corn. I might have to include that in uh, in the fall vegetables. Scarecrows, Charlie Brown. <laughs> I might get in trouble doing. Well, I don't know if I would do stamps of Charlie Brown if I would get in trouble. I don't know. It could be fan art. Jersey says, basically, I have a giant yapper. But that's what's cool about it, Jersey, is when you when, when we visit your channel and you're talking away like that, we feel like, oh, you treat us like I'm your long-lost friend. And you're going, you know, you're just going, you, you feel welcomed. You feel welcomed. I tend to go into my, and I have now, what I try to do now is I can't talk all the time while I'm doing art because I can't do art and talk at the same time. I invariably either mess up what I'm talking about or mess up what I'm doing on my paper. But what I try to do is do a segment where I am going to the zone and work on the art and then say, okay, I'm going to come out and we're going to chat now. So I try to do mine that way, and then I'll go back and I'll review the chat and the questions and stuff like that. That's what works best for me. But, but uh, I, I, you know, if I could talk to you guys the way you do, I mean, you're, you're constantly seeing everybody that's coming in and welcoming them. And, you know, I feel like I'm your best friend <laughs> when I go to your channel. Of course, I feel like that with a lot of channels um, because we get to know each other, you know, we get to know, you know, kind of get to know the families and, you know, where you live and the whole thing. All right. I left off with Charlie Brown. Uh, silhouettes in front of moons. Oh, silhouettes. 
In front of moons. Ooh, I like that. In front of moons. I might have one week. I might save up off the last week where I just pick things. Like if random doesn't pick that one and I like it, I might, you know, do several silhouettes for the last week. Or I might just do that for one week anyway or something like that. And the trucks. And the dirty dozens. <laughs> I only might choose them myself. It'll be fun to see what random org picks, though. All right. Silhouettes in front of moons. That was a good one, Janice. Hi, Janice. Welcome, welcome. Oh, all have great art as well. Yes, they do, Riri. All the channels. I got the Fibsville characters or, uh, as Fibsville people, Candy. Thank you. Black cats. Black cats. I'd have to do seven of them for a week. But we could get seven black cats in there. Um, Riri? Was Riri leaving? I'll have a great art as well. Pumpkins and gourds. Well, you know, that can be a gift, Jersey. She said she got the gift of gab. But, you know, that can be a gift. That can be a gift. Uh, somebody's got to be the talking. If nobody talked, this would be a pretty different world if nobody talked. I used to be a really quiet person. I mean, you know, I hardly talked at all. But... Uh, you know, I, I come to realize that if, you know, you got to talk, you got to talk to communicate. <laughs> Riri's still here. I don't know what M-A-E-G-E -E is. What is that, Don? M-A-E-G-E. -E. I don't know what that is. Bonfire. That could be a fall theme. That ha that might have to fall into the harvest themes. Some of these, like barns and country barns, might have to be together. Pumpkin patch and, and uh, pumpkins and gourds might have to be together with the Indian corn for, for uh, fall vegetables. I might have to combine some of those. That's what makes you you, Laura, and people love you. Yes, we do. Yeah. We thought that you were were leaving. <laughs> Hi, Angie. She says she's been lurking all night. That's okay. Welcome, Angie. Gnomes. Gnomes. We could do fall gnomes. <laughs> Sunflowers. Hi, Taz. Sunflowers. Hay rides. Now remember, I want to do a week of them, so I might have to combine some of these into a week. Acorns and pine cones. That kind of falls into the florist fauna. Acorns and forest uh, flora. And pine cones. Corn maze. Corn maze. Tractors. Acorns and pine cones. You, we do feel welcome, Jersey. Uh, candy corn. That could come up with what? Candy corn. Could I do a week of candy corn? I don't know. <laughs> Aww. Uh, Samantha. Hi, Samantha Owens. She says, I've been in and out. Well, welcome, welcome. I like the way you run your stream, Mary. Aw. Well, you too, Jersey. Oh, Marge. 
Marge. Now, what is Marge? Is that a suggestion or are you saying hello to somebody? <laughs> is there a Marge in here that I missed? I don't know what you mean. Mina's got to go feed her kitties. Harvest moon. Harvest moons? Is that what that is? We got the moons in front of moons, so harvest moons. Harvest moons? I want to do something that I can do for a series of weeks. Like there are three days. Let's do what Becky did. Well, let's... I'm going to say stop. I'm going to say stop. Don't say any more. Hi, Desert Nana. Apple cider mugs. We'll put mugs. I like the idea of doing mugs because I could carve mugs pretty good and put things on front in on the mug. But don't give me any more suggestions. Scott says hi. Hi, Scott. <laughs> oh, a witchy poo? Witchy poos? It has to be witchy poos with the plural because I, I I have to do seven. We could do seven witches. Uh, old fashioned dolls or old photos of people. Old dolls. Yeah, it doesn't have to be fall. Old dolls or old photos. I like that idea too. I, I love sketching from old photos. But don't say any more now. Let me catch up and then I'm going to go. Alright, stop. Okay, so let's see what I have. We've got fall leaves. I think I could do seven of those. But those could really fall in with the the floor's fauna. So I'm going to put leaves in here. And Dirty Dozen. I like that. So I'm going to make that one. Autumn Walks to Harvest Themes. We really got into Harvest Themes here. So I'm going to put a question there if I want to do that. P pumpkins, gourds, and squash can come down here with the fall vegetables. So I'm going to put fall vegetables up here. And that's going to be three. Barns. I like the idea of doing barns. Barns and country barns. Fibsville people is five. I'm not sure about the Fibsville people, though. I might have to think about that. Uh, because I like the idea, I, I, I like the idea that you see those people in your head like you see them, not like how I see them. And if I start drawing them, then you'll go, oh, I didn't see them right. So pumpkin patch I'm going to put with the fall vegetables. So pumpkin patch. I'm going to try to combine some of these because I'm going to do them in series. Seven, seven days. Red trucks, that'll be five. Mums, mums, mums can be with sunflower. Mums and sunflowers can be together. Six. County fair, seven. Apples can be, well, apples isn't a vegetable. Um. But I'm going to put it with the fall. I'm going to say fruit and veg. Well, I don't know. Well, let's give it its own category. I might be able to do seven apples. I, this is questionable. Because um, I don't have anything to mix it with. Fall vegetables is going to go up here. with the And the mushroom floor and everything. That's going to go up there too. Indian corn and corn maize. We'll make that nine. Charlie Brown. <laughs> It better not pick Charlie Brown because I'm not sure that I could do Charlie Brown. I think I'm going to cross him off. Um, not cross him off the list. Cross him off my choices. Because I eventually... I mean, I could draw him. I'd have to look at him. I could do him for Inktober. But I eventually want to make stamps out of these. I like this one. Silhouettes in front of the moon. Cats. Bonfire. Um, bonfire. I'm not sure I could put that in. Uh, I'm not sure I could do seven and I'm not. I guess bonfire and hayrides could go together. 
sunflowers I put up there, hay rides, gnomes, tractors, tractors. Candy corn mugs. I like mugs. 13 and witchy poos. 14. Okay, I got... Oh, no, I got old dolls and old photos. 15. Okay, I got 15. Now, let's see. I may not take... I may end up doing what I want to do. But let's see what, what... Out of these 15, what random org tells me to do. I may not like what it tells me. I may, I may like it and I may not. But I like to go out to random org. I do this quite a bit. And for something minor like this, I don't make I don't live my life by random org. But um I do when I'm doing minor stuff like this, I like to you know, rather than me pick, I like to have it be truly random. So let's go to random org. I might already be there from the last time. Uh random. I was there twice. Do, 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 do. I'm at the sequence generator. Let's go back. Oh, they're scheduling maintenance on Wednesday, 2020, September 30th. I thought I was going back. Yep. Random org, come on. That's not going back. Well, come on. Well, let's just type it in. I think it's not... Uh... It's not going back here. Let's type it in. Well, it's not giving me my, come on, sequence generator. Here's your sequence. That isn't what I wanted, though. And it's not going back again. What are you doing? Let's clear out history. I don't need all this. Delete history. That's okay. I don't need it. Get rid of it all. Okay, now let's type in random org. I have more trouble setting this up. <laughs> random org sequence generator. Oh, it tried to... Um, let's do that again. It tried to go to one I already had in there. I deleted everything, no. Switch to tab, switch to tab. I don't want to switch to tab. Well, let's just go to random org. I have to mess around with this stuff before I finally get to where I want to be. All right. Sequences. All right, between 1 and 15. We're going to take the first five. Get sequence. Oh, what did it give me? That wasn't five. <laughs> Smallest value. Largest value between 1. 1 and 15. Jeez, Mary. All this trouble to get <laughs> to get some numbers. It's taking fourteen, four, seven, six, and eight. Now, will I like them? Fourteen was witchy poos. Four was the country barns. I like the barns. I'm not so sure about the witches. We'll see. 
Seven was the county fair. I'm not sure about that either. So I might pick what I want anyway. Six was mums and sunflowers. But I might take these that I don't want here and work them into the last week. That might be what I do. And eight was apples. Now, I'm not happy with that. I like the barns. So, on the last week, I might do witches, county fair, sunflowers, and apples. That's how I'm going to do that. This is how Mary thinks. Because you guys have inspired me with some of your choices. So, for Inktober... <laughs> I am going to do, the first week will be days one through three, I believe. Days one through three. Calendar. Boop, boop, doo doo. Calendar. That's Facebook. Calendar. Yeah. And then the second week is days four through ten. The third week is days 11 through 17. The fourth week is 18 through 24. And the fifth week is 25 through 31. All right. So I like barns. I'm going to do barns. That appeals to me. Because I know I can do stamps. And it's not that these don't appeal to me. I think I might... Well... I think there's just some others. Like, I like the idea of a, doing a dirty dozen. I'm not sure how I'd do a stamp of a dirty dozen. I might have to put, pick out images and carve images off of my dirty dozen. We'll see. Um... Could I do seven dirty dozens in a row? I'd have to work fast and small. So if I don't have to work on a big tabletop, I could work on a four by four or three by three, a five by five tile, rather than doing a huge dirty dozen. That might be interesting. Um, I like to... Let's see, down here I'm going to do... Witchy poos. I'm gonna call them witchy poos. <laughs> uh, fit the fair, county fair, and I'll do this on the last week. I'll lump these that random pit. Um, mums and sunflowers and apples. Mums, sunflower. An apple. Now, I gotta pick two more that appealed to me. I like the moon. Silhouette in front of the moon. I like that. And I like the red trucks. How did I spell silhouette? I'm not sure I spelled it right. In front of moon. Because I could see stamps on that. Like a cat in front of a moon, or even a witchy poo in front of a moon. Trees. Uh, and I also like, I like them all. I like gnomes, I like mugs, and I like old dolls and photos. So I'm going to put down mugs. But I might put the red truck and, and old uh, dolls on my mugs. But we'll see how I carve that. I may not carve it. We'll see. I may not carve these on my mug. I may carve a mug and just, well, we'll see. But that gives me a start. Barns I'm good with. Dirty Dozen, I think I can do Dirty Dozen. It'll be interesting to see how I handle the carving. Silhouette in front of the moon. Mugs. I like the, the idea of doing the mugs. Hmm. 
Hmm. We'll have to think about that. That's what I've come up with for now. I, I, I'll think about it between now and October 1st. And we'll see where I go with it. Thank you, guys. I love that. I love doing lists with you guys. You guys inspire me so much. So here are the, the doodles that I did with Becky. Uh, I think I showed these before. And mine were really doodly because I just had a... Well, she said if you have a big pen, that's all you need. And I just had a, a pen that wasn't too dark. But... <laughs> this looks like a kid did it. The lady in the red dress. The mushroom. This guy I did and he wanted out. He says, let me out. Oh, no. He says, where am I? <laughs> he doesn't know where he's at. He's just kind of sitting in a corral there. Here's the scarecrow. Here I did the gal in the red dress again. I did a hydrangea. She did a flower. I did the goldfish and the fall leaf. The porch swing. Here's the old truck. I made mine blue. And butterflies. I love this design. I might work this up into a stamp. I saw this. This is not my idea. But it was two butterflies and they were locking antenna. And I love that as a design. A pumpkin. A cornucopia. We said the old truck. The mug. Candy corn. Sunflower. And corn maize. Cool. Cool school. So that's all I'm going to do in this journal tonight. So let's put, let's put it away. Eventually I'm going to bind this journal. Um, I'm going to try to fill up these pages before the end of the year. But this, this section's all full. I don't need to pull that one out anymore. And this I just have this I just have a few pages left. We'll work in these. I want to, I'm working on Norma's cats. She has two cats. I want to work on her cats and I want to work on Lala Gamma's cats. Or dog. I'm sorry, not cat, dog. But I'm not going to do that tonight either. <laughs> oh dear. Let's varnish my Penelope postcard. When I go to the post office tomorrow, I'll I'll mail it. See, it's drying pretty flat now. It just needs some... I'm going to put some varnish on it. Uh, <laughs> where did I put my varnish? Wherever I put that GAC. There it is. It's not GAC, it's GAC. <laughs> I'll be calling it GAC all the time now. And rather than wash out my brush, I'm just going to pull one that's already clean. And let's varnish her. You don't need a whole lot of varnish. And Dee Dee says, don't use a brush, use a sponge. But you saw how dirty my sponges were. And I go, what's wrong with brush strokes? It's art. <laughs> what's wrong with my brush strokes? You don't need a whole lot. But what I like about the varnish on these is it still matte it isn't that it gives it a shine and and it adds that protective layer but also it just it adds a coating to it that I like even the matte does all right there we go that didn't take long at all did it we're gonna set it aside and let it dry oh and here I have, oops, it went over the cliff. It went over the other cliff. It fell off of my cart over, over there. This is the mug that Deborah, and I'm trying to leave this out on my desk, but I keep moving stuff around on my desk. This Deborah gifted to me, Deborah Brown. Thank you so much, Deborah. She took my little icon and made a, a mug out of it. Isn't that cool? Isn't that cool? I'm trying to keep it out. I don't want to ruin it. And then, let's see. Let's put, set these over here. I don't need that envelope anymore. I did my envelope. Shall we, shall we work in this a little bit? I got that uh, fabric out. I want to get some fabric ready to send to... Uh, 
do, 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 do. Janet, bomb. I'm going to send her some. I'm going to send uh, Sue some. And I was going to send Sharon some, but Sharon, Sharon, she always says, she always makes me think she's got enough. But I'm going to use some of this, and what I don't use of this, I think I'm going to split. Let's see. I've got quite a bit. I wanted to put some in uh, Cheryl's, and I've got that little Coke journal that I'm sending. Well, I've got, I cut yards of this. So, let's see where I want to cut here. We're going to cut for my book first. Because, see, this, this design here is right here. Only this says C-R-E-M-O. That doesn't say C-R-E-M-O. Isn't that interesting? Everything else is the same. I don't know where C-R-E-M-O came from. But I want to cut a few of these for pages, and I don't need much. It's five and a half by three and a half. So I'm just going to trim off of the... And I think if I trim right here... Well, no, I get that electric... Now, I'm just going to trim, I'm just going to trim a, a side of it off. I'm going to sneeze. My brother sneezes and it embarrasses me, so now I'm getting ready to sneeze. And I'm cutting through four thicknesses here. So I'm going to trim this off to keep for myself right here. And... Oh, I don't want to cut that pretty lady. Let's cut. Let's cut this. And <laughs> we'll give Janet the pretty lady. I don't want to cut that pretty lady. <laughs> and while I'm out here, I'm going to cut some. Des I'm going to give that to Janet. And she'll get some of this salvage. And maybe... This is pretty wide, so she's going to get a good hunk of it. She'll get more than she can use. And I got Janet's envelope all painted. Hopefully, Janet, I'll get that out in the mail to you, too. Let's see. Well, I'm just going to cut right down here because I started. So we're going to give this to Janet. To, this is this is a good portion, and she can she can use it or share it or do whatever you want with it, Janet. If you're listening, Janet Baum. And I promised uh, Suze I'd send her some, but I've got another piece that I'm going to send to Suze. I want to send some to Cheryl. I have uh, Cheryl's and Janet's envelopes all painted. So, and I want to put some lace because Janet is always needing lace. And I left that pretty lady just for Janet. <laughs> so this goes to Janet. I'm going to fold it up this way. Well, I want to fit it in that envelope so it doesn't have to be. Oh, Mary, you're such a. <laughs> Let's fold it this way. And this way, and this way. What am I doing here? There, there. This will go to Janet. Oh, you're very welcome. I've got more of this. This just happened to be what was on this. I think I got two or three of these, and I've got about two yards that I haven't even put on pieces yet. And the rest of this, I think I'm going to send to Cheryl. It's about the same size of what I sent to Janet. And you gals, you can share it or use it. Do whatever you want with it. It's more, I have more than what I can. And then I'll use this to fold up something else. I'll try to get those out tomorrow. I got both of your envelopes painted. And I got to get Beth's envelope out. So, But the reason I cut this, I saved me a strip off of that. The reason I cut this is that I want to I want to take a piece of this 
here. And I could take that because it matches. <sighs> I want to put a couple pieces in this little book. And I'm noticing this little book, I should have left just a little bit more of a, of a, well, it, uh, it lays, it lays flat, but it also kind of pops open. But what I did was I took that little, this little booklet and just glued it on each side. I don't know if I could have made that any wider, but I don't care for this. This is just a little, little journal to play in. It's not really, I guess if I bend it, it'll lay flat. I have to train it. And oh look. Well that's okay. Because that's a page. Now where do I want to put this? I want this three and a half by five. And it almost fits across two pages. Just like that. With a little leftover. Except I think I want the leftover here. And this I learned was Tybeck. Uh, Shannon Green left a message. That it was Tyvek, and that's why it melted. So let's go to maybe this side. And uh, I'm going to put this in here. and But I'm going to cut it. And this is how I, how I measure. Where's my scissors? What did I do with those scissors? I just had them out. Here they are. This is how I measure. I better measure. I better mark it. I want it five and a half inches, right? Five and a half. Let's measure five and a half here. Let's see, I don't want the, yeah, I do want that. All right, five and a half. Get my pen. five and a half and just draw it across there now I know I have glued things straight across the page this way and it always gathers up so I know this is three and a half so and I also know that I want this side and not this side because this guy is head is chopped off here so I want three and a half on this side. So I want to measure three and a half. And it doesn't, this isn't cut even. I didn't cut it even, but I don't care. It, it's a, it's a junk journal. It's not meant to be cut even. <laughs> three and a half. Here, it's all jaggedy there. And then from here, I want three and a half. Boy, and I'm just going to get under his chin there, I think. Three and a half. And three and a half. What? I didn't go three and a half. I only went three. Oh, I only went three. That's three and a half there. I'm going to get, I'm almost there. I just have to trim this off a little right there. I'll just I'll get his chin. We we kind of cut this guy right there. But I, I can put something over that. Alright. Mary's just yakking away. So I'm gonna cut here. And I'm going to cut down here. And that's ink underneath my little fingernail there. <laughs> when I was stamping, I just 
jammed my little finger into that ink pad. I'm such a good cut. I don't know how I got so talented. I'll tell you. I cut nice straight lines and everything. <laughs> oh, yeah, we're right, Mary. Now, it's good enough for me. I'm going to trim this little bit off here if I can. Now, how am I going to put it in there? I think I'm just going to put it in with my glue. I think I'm just going to clodge it in with my glue. And we'll see how that works. Now I have this whole piece to play with. This is my, this is my, oh, I love that number 117. Do I have a closer one? I have it there. Pretty close. I might play with that in this journal. So let's go put these in. Which means... I want some more waxed paper. Good night, Holly. Are you leaving or is Julie leaving? What did Becky say? Beck needs a break from crocheting. Be back in a bit. Becky must be crocheting. Becky must be crocheting tonight. Was Holly leaving or was Julie say Julie leaving and just saying good night to Holly? I sometimes get confused. <laughs> Mary, you get confused, really? Yep. Quite frequently. All right. We're going to collage these pieces down. Now he, he's going to stick out a little. I might put something over that. But I kind of like all the, well, you know, it has to go this way, though. To look right. No, it goes this way. And then this piece goes over here like this. I'm like, oh look, the 117 is hanging right off of the top of the page there. I'm going to move that over a little. Yeah, that'll work. Let's do this page first. And I'm going to use that. Let's move this out of the way. Hmm. Let's get the towel out. I'm going to use the big blue brush from Sue's. I really do want to finish these little journals. I have so much I want to work in. I want to work in my sewing book, my sewing caboodle book. I want to do ink talk. See, that's it. I get so inspired with things. I get so inspired with things. Let's just fold that over. All right. This piece will go under here. Under, is there one in there? No, that's it. That's it. Okay, we're going to move that way over, though. All right. And I'm just going to use my school glue again. We'll see how it holds. Now, if you were doing this to, to gift somebody, gift, gift, G-I-F-T, to somebody or to sell, you probably want to use a nicer glue. Um, but for me, I'm good with this. Oops. Did I cut it too short? Nope. 
I'm good. My little man isn't showing up very good on there. He's just right there on the corner, though. This little man got cut off. He's over here. I'm going to put this piece on here. Like that. My the seam of my book kind of, my fold of my book kind of comes right in there. We will see, said the blind man. But he didn't see at all. Uh-oh, I didn't want to do that. Well, yeah. put this right in there. Now, to tell you the truth, I wouldn't have needed to cut this one, but because I wanted this guy to match up, I'm letting that go across the seam anyway. I usually try to cut this in two pieces and then match it up here at this, um, cut it, leave this seam put the cut two pieces right at the seam so it has room to fold but that's not going to happen so I really didn't need to cut that down the center but I did and of course it's crooked up here and I'm not sure that I'm not sure I might just have to go over it with something all right we're good with it though Let's give it a little heat dry. Heat gun alert! These pages in this little book are sewn in. It's like a little composition book. And it has... Um, Actually, the ruled lines were on top. If you turn it like this, um, the ruled lines were up here and then had blank space to here in the book that I cut apart. But I've been covering all those up. Here's my ruled lines, and I've been covering them up. That's to draw or collage on the top and write on the bottom, but I haven't been doing that. Now, I need to cut, I need to cut here. I don't want to cut with the fabric scissors. There we go. I just got his shirt. Hee <laughs> of white shirt there. I have to do something with that. So we're going to let that page rest a little. Do I want to put in one more from this fabric? Three and a half by five and a half. 
how about going to this is my mad page how about putting some in the back cover do I have one more page here I do we could do some on the back cover do I want to put it on the front cover could three and a half by five and a half just put one here well would I want it over there just put one here and one here let's see what I have I have this again but I also like I like the pretty ladies now let's fold it like this and I really did cut that the right width when I cut it off that piece because it's just enough to fit in here so and that if I do the pretty ladies I'll get that 117 so what I'll do I think I'll cut it five and a half comes from the top of this to just under the 117 there So let's put that aside. I'm going to cover you guys up a little. I'm going to cut it right here. Maybe I should draw it with my pen. So right there comes across to there and then down five and a half. Yeah, what do I have under? Yes. Messy Mary. All right, five and a half. Yeah, see it comes, actually it comes a little bit further below, right about there. And right about there. So I'm going to cut it here, whoops. I have a white chalk pencil, but I don't want to dig it out. And I want to cut it here and here. So, let's get the fabric scissors out again. Thanks to Sue's. And let's cut right here along this line. And, you know, I might do the back here. Let's see. Let's get this piece out of the way. We're done with this. This is for me to play with. All right. So if I do another five and a half, what I want to do is I want to put the ladies here right in there and then on the back cover I'll do this yep and that'll be enough might be too much I knew this journal was gonna alligator out I knew it was gonna alligator out anyway so 
I was I was not surprised when it started doing it if it starts doing it when it starts doing it so cut right oh I'm gonna get his chin and get that guy's chin right there might cut him off a little too we'll see and yeah, I'm not going to be able to see that too well. Right there. I can kind of see it. Let's cut that first. Right here. So this junk journal cover, the book, the cover part came from Karen K. And the pages and uh, if some of the ephemera like this and the cards and and uh, this came from the kit that some Fibs Villian <laughs> Sim Fibs Angel sent to me. The mad was out of my fussy cuts. This came from Shannon, the Winge and the Rathskeller. And then these are just fussy cuts that I had. So I'm just kind of making a little, a little journal, a little fun book. Just playing and having fun. Now I also got, um, this is why I can't chat and art at the same time. I got, um, in that same packet of baseboards that Karen sent me, was a little report card baseboard. Let's see if I can get it out here. I put it in the kit. Let's see if I can find it. Here it is. Is that it? I have to pull it all out. Or halfway out. Where is that baseboard? Well, it's, I'm going to have to pull it out. I want to show it to you. Not in there. Here. This. And we'll pull that out. Let's put these back while I have them in my hand. I can get them in with no issue. Yay! So this was, this was the section that I made these pages out of. And this back cover here, right here that I cut, is what's here. And this really went right down in there, <laughs> like that. But what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to make it flip open from the top. So this is a little report card from the Worcestershire Public Schools. And I'm going to trim this same little book out here. It's really fun. <laughs> See, I cut, the, I cut the binding right there. And I will have, I'm going to cut this one this way and make it open from the top. So this one will flip open and this will be the back of it. Then I'll have, I'll have, well I'll have some squares in there, but I'll have this 
part here for for another journal. So I'll get three journals out of this little book. That's going to be fun. And what I'm going to do with this is I have among my stuff here, if I can find it, I got it out. I got it out because I wanted to show it to you. Here it is, right over here. I got this at that book sale I went to just a few weeks ago. And it's a speller book, grades 5 through 8. And it's just list of spelling words, a dictionary lesson. This book belongs to Cheryl. C-H-E-R-R-E-L. Not, not C-H-S-H-E-R-R-E-L. Cheryl. So this was Cheryl's book. I got something on my foot. Piece of wax paper. New York. 1916, 1916, Newsom and Company, all rights reserved. Dear Father, I received your letter, and to prove to you how important I regard the rules you gave me, I am following your advice by writing you at once. I will proceed to describe to you the arrangement of my desk, as you say it is most necessary to attend to this before attempting to write. My desk is tidy. The articles on it are arranged neatly. You can see from this letter I have obeyed your rules for writing. I have used the eraser when necessary. There are no blots. Finally, I think right, the writing is neat and there are no misspelled words. Does this satisfy you, Father? <laughs> if so, Remember our bargain and bring me the violin on your return. Come soon, for I am lonesome without you. I go skating every day. Of course, I'm not yet a skillful skater, but I'm slowly improving. I shall be careful in addressing the envelope to use capital letters and to place a period after every initial. I want my letter within and without to satisfy you. Your obedient son, John. Norton, Massachusetts, December 14th, 1809. This letter, almost exactly as given in your book, was written by a boy of long ago in answer to a letter from his father. What rules did his father give him about his desk? Using the eraser, blots, spelling? What bargain did he make with his son? Write a letter like the one you think John's father sent to him. Dear John, just write to me once in a while and you'll get a violin. Oh, by the way, clean off your desk. <laughs> oh, dear. But it's a, it's a vocabulary, and I thought that would be fun. And I also have another book, and I'm not sure I can put my hands on it, that has more fear. This is a little bit more advanced than grades 7 and 8. This is a, uh, a practical reference library. This is, this is going to fall off. I'm going to take it off and put it here. But see, this has, this has some press leave in it. This has some things that could go in there, too, like, like this in that little book, in the report card book. This is a little bit more advanced than grades 7 and 8. And then, also, I think I got this fabric from Pearl. This is Dick, Jane, and Sally here, fabric. I thought I might do a couple pages of Dick, Jane, and Sally in that little little book here. I'd have to find one that fits, but I think I, I think I can. <laughs> of course, let's just pull it all out, Mary. Well, I got to to show it to you. Well, I guess it's just going to have to all come out like this. Well, the little dogs will fit. The little dogs will fit. 
the little teddy bear driving their wagon will fit. I think this is Jane on roller skates. She almost fits. And so you got little pieces like the little guy down there. I think I got two pieces of this. Here's Sally, she'll fit. But I don't want to make this totally elementary um, because the lessons here are English, arithmetic, geography, spelling, history, writing. So this might be a little bit more elementary, but I thought it would be cute in there. Oh, I did a fine job of that, didn't I? Yeah, let's put the pins back in there for for now. So that's, but I'm not going to work on. I'm not going to work on this till I get my cigar book done. I had no idea I was going to work on these. I opened a happy mail, what was it, Friday? I opened this happy mail and said, oh, I'm going to do journals. Let's put this back in here just to keep it. Come on. All righty. I probably have bored you guys stiff. But I'm having fun. <laughs> All right. So the speller is going to go over with that packet too. Now I was cutting. I cut that. So I need to cut here. Now, when I do Inktober, I don't have to use all black and black ink or all blue ink. I can use uh, FW inks. I've got quite a few FW inks that are all colors. So, all right, let's get let's get my book out wherever I put that right here. We were going to put the ladies in the front. And they're going to fit right in here. And so about... If I fold this in half, it should be... It should be that I could cut it right there. And still have enough. Probably have more. All right. But three and a half and three and a half is seven. What you want is never here when you want it. Where is it? I have that T-square ruler. No, nope, I'm not putting my hands on it. Is that it? Yeah. No? What happened to the T-square one? There it is. Alright. So let's fold this in half. We'll work with that one later. Let's fold it almost in half. And I want to go three and a half. Oh. And that is just on the line there. Maybe not even quite three and a half here. 
That's going to be a little short there, but I think I can kind of stretch it. Oh, where's my mark? Where's my pen? I don't know. Let's get another one out. <laughs> well, no, it might just be on the mark there. Three and a half might be on the mark there. Let's mark. Let's mark it here. And mark it down here. Because three and a half is right here. And right here. I'm going to cut it right there. And now I want to go three and a half this way, which is right here and right here. This is just for my little journal. It doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be perfect, perfect, because I'm not a perfect, perfect person. I'm trying to make it as nice as I can. up a little. There we go. Now let's cut this. Need that. I got a rotary cutter, I just haven't gotten it out yet. The rotary cutter would probably be better. As Tanya says, one day I said, now professional seamstress would be having blah, 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 blah. And she said, no, a professional seamstress would be having a rotary cutter. <laughs> I like that. So we're going to collage these two in before my paintbrush gets dry up there. Let's see how these other guys are doing in here. They seem to be doing pretty good. So we're going to put this lady over here. Right in there. And this lady will come over in here. Right in here. Let's do this one first. Where's my little... Waxy papers, and so we'll just tear this one in half. And 
And after I get this done, I'll come and chat. There's a lot of pages in this little book, let me tell you. And since they're stitched, they're pretty strong. They're pretty strong since they're stitched. So I don't worry too much about them falling out. We're going to put that one in first. It's just... See, that's why I don't like to have this mug out here. I smashed my logo with glue. Let's put it back over here. I don't know if you can tell. On this, I got someplace on here, I got white splatter. I tried to get it off, but I'm going to have to scratch it off. In other words, anything on this desk is subject to disaster. All right, now we're going to take this lady, right? This way, right? Was it this one? Yeah. And she goes right in. And I can put washi tape around the edges. It doesn't have to be perfect, perfect. As perfect as I can get it would be nice. I've got a little edge on off in here, but I'll, I'll do something with that. And then this lady will come over here. I think I got that backwards. But that's okay. I'm alright with it. Because I think this goes over here. But I like it like that. And then I can put a something in there. Do I like it like that? Hmm. Well, I got it glued down. I'm not going to take it up. We're going to leave it just like that. That's the way I did it. That's the way it's going to stay. I don't think this one will be as hard to put down because it's flatter. I like it. I like it. Let's give it a little dry. It's not too wet. So now we're going to flip to the back. Now, this needs to be dried a little. And we're going to put the men on the back. Just like that. 
So I think I can fold them in half again. I measured out at three and a half. Boy, just right at the line, too. Maybe just a little under, but it doesn't matter. Three and a half is right there. this I don't even know if I can trim I'm gonna leave it I'll have to trim the underside let's make sure here right on the line. I think I'm going to leave that. Three and a half there. Somebody sent me this little T-square. I've got a big one, but that big one can be kind of hard to manipulate around when you've got a small area. So whoever sent this little T-square to me, thank you so much. I use it. It'd be much easier if I had my had the rotary cut, cutter out here, but I don't do things the easy way. You guys know that. This is not a tutorial, by the way. <laughs> this is just me playing. liking it. I'm liking it. So this guy is going to go over here and he'll probably fall over the edge a little. Hopefully. If he doesn't, that's okay. And this guy will go in here. Right up to the edge. So let's do this guy. And after I get this done, I'll come out and chat. And I'll let this rest a little. in there. If 
got a couple little threads hanging, but that's okay. Alrighty. Let's do this side. He's going to go in here. Oh, he's a little short. He's a little short. I'll have to darken that. Probably with some black ink. I didn't cut that either. I cut here. I don't think I might have cut that. I cut it a little short. That's okay. It's just a junk journal. start down at the bottom. Maybe I can, no, stretching it isn't going to help. It's just got a little gap up there. That little white spot is part of the fabric. That's not me. Must have been a a flaw in the print. Maybe on the original cigar box. So, I think I'm going to take... I don't know if I want to do it. With my, let's dry it first. Let's hit it with a heat gun. Let's take this and let's just darken it if I can. I like that. And let's darken this. I'll be doing something over that anyway. So there. I've done six pages tonight. And it's getting fatter. It's already alligatoring out. But I put that little black band around it. Help it hold its shape. Like that. So we're just going to leave it like that. Let's put my brush in the water. Let's put the lid on the glue pot. Here's Penelope. I'm going to work on that some more. Let's see what's going on in chat. Let's see what's going on in chat. I don't know who the mama is. Mary, I'm happy you like that little square. I use them all the time. 
Is that what you got? Did you send that to me, Rhonda? Did you send this to me? I do use it. I use it all the time, the little T-square. I need to use it more often. I'd have better measurement. You love Penelope. Aww. I'll have to do more paintings of Penelope. I'll have to do more. She reads every, oh yeah, Mary reads everything aloud. <laughs> I do. I do read things aloud. You know, when I come back and review chat, I'm actually doing verbally here what I used to do after my streams. Now after my streams, I do not look at chat as much as I go in and I figure up the times between my projects, like when I go from this to this. And that takes me quite a long time to figure up all the chapters. So when I go back and read chat, I'm kind of reviewing to see if I missed anything. <laughs> and yeah, I read them aloud. <laughs> also, it kind of, it helps the people that watches the replay to know what's going on when I read the chat. Um, it, it, it just helps if you're watching the replay. It helps to know what's going on. Otherwise, they're just sitting here watching me do nothing but thumb through my little book. I try to be, be judicious about it, though. If it's if it's bad chat, unless I'm unless I don't catch it, I try not to read it. Or if you say, "Mary, don't read this." <laughs> uh Oh, I think that when Kitty says Mama's about to come in chat, I think she was referring to Mary's going to come chat with us, so be good. So I better be careful what I read here. Angie says the T-squares are awesome. Uh, we're talking about dogs and cats, I think. Mary, use that mug. I told you that if you need a new one, I can redesign one for you, not to worry. Well, uh, I'm getting there. I got it out. Let me get it back on my desk here. At least I got it out and set it on my desk. I don't want to break it, though. And um, when I'm working, sometimes when I'm painting, I'll fling my paint or something. And, you know, I don't want to mess it up. <laughs> oh, Dawn had to leave. Okay, good night, Dawn. She's long gone, probably. She said, fun hanging out with you, but I got to go switch switch to heat. It sounds like it's getting cool in her part of the country. <laughs> Aw, thank you, Dawn. Sweet dreams. Riri is here. Angie's here. Let's see. Da -de 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 -dum. You would all laugh so hard at me. I was in another stream and there was another Rhonda in there. Well, I was not paying attention and they were telling the other Rhonda. <laughs> I'm telling the teacher Rhonda ain't paying attention. <laughs> oh dear. Hi Jane Litterick, if you're listening. I noticed you were in one of my other streams, and I don't think I welcomed you. Jane Litterick, L-I-T-T-E-R-I-C-K. Welcome, welcome, if you're, if you're still listening. She was here about a half an hour ago. Aunt Beck said goodnight. She's back to focusing on the crochet. Uh, Jane said hello to everybody susan says they are so expensive they won't just donate that thing if they did it would probably not even make it on the floor for sale i'm not sure what they're talking about frank had to leave exercise equipment in the thrift stores but never the inversion table oh because they're expensive frank said good night to everybody Uh, 
Oh, Janet. Oh, my goodness. Janet said when she was in eighth grade, she fell off the top bar of the uneven bars. I don't think I ever did those in, you know, they're talking about physical education and, and exercise stuff. She took a bad fall. Then they discovered the curvature of the spine. Oh, Janet. Owie. That was like me. I didn't have exercise equipment or uneven bars or bars. I had fences out behind the barn. <laughs> When I was in second grade, I told this story before. When I was in second grade, um, I think it was I think it was second grade. Yeah, it was second grade. We were playing behind the barn at the little neighbor girl's house, and uh, they had out behind the barn. They had a section that had a cement floor, and they kept hay bales in there, and they had a fence around the hay bales. They had cows. They had dairy cows. My mother bought milk from them all the time. And I was proving to the little neighborhood girl and to my younger brother that I could walk across the top of that fence with no problem. Well, there was a problem. <laughs> I fell and broke my leg, and I didn't know it was broken. I just fell, and then I tried to get up, and I kept telling them, I can't walk, I can't walk. So they helped me hobble to the house and got me on the bicycle, and her mother looked out and said, What's wrong? What's wrong? And they said, Mary hurt her leg. Well, take her home. So they took me home on, with a broken leg on the bicycle. Ah, <sighs> such it is with kids. Janet gave the link to Dawn's channel. Uh, what are we talking about? Oh, did I, did I buffer? Because it said I was back. I usually go back in the video, then go forward. That usually does a trick instead of refreshing. Okay, she's back. I must have buffered there for a little bit. The circle of doom. So sorry. Looks like I got something on my tablet there. Do, 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 do. Frank said hello. Mary, are you going to do Shannon's black and white journal? Janet, if you're, I'm going to go back down to the bottom. Janet, if you're still looking, listening, um, um, I probably won't do, I, as tempted as I am, I probably won't. Uh, I may do it sometime in the future, but between doing these little journals and working in my other journals, I'm still doing Lisa and Tanya's napkin and tag book journal i'm still working on those i'm working on the caboodle journals and uh, there'll probably be another swap there's a live stream hop so i'm just you know and i'm going to do inktober and carve november and december daily i'm just for me to take on one more project no matter who it is i probably wouldn't do it but i am enjoying shannon's channel i am so glad that she's back she's back and we love her, Shannon Green. It was a doggy dimmer dinner time, Carla said. Julie said she's still here. She hasn't been ch chatting. Mama equal Mary. Jane says that she's still here and listening. We're glad to have you join us, Jane. You're kind of new to us. And sometimes I miss the new people when they come in. So, yeah, Shannon's back. We appreciate having Shannon back with us. So, I varnished this card. So, you know, I really, this looks like it's been painted on. And it's clodged. This was a napkin back. Now, I, I have no hesitation at all of sending this through the mail. I'm going to send it back to me, though. <laughs> Sorry, guys. It's coming back to me. I'm going to do postcard on the back. Maybe I'll do some more, but I'm not committing to it because I commit and then I get overcommitted. I've got about four of these that I want to send those. Uh, yeah, let's just do a diamond here. Now well, let's just do my little, whoops, that didn't go so good, did it? Did I forget how to do them? 
my little cats. Yep, I think I forgot how I did them. There I go. There. Now I'll do a couple little. Oh, I'm not happy with that. I want to see how this travels through the mail. I think it'll be fine. And maybe I'll make some more. But I've got a stack of postcards over there that I've made and haven't sent out. <laughs> we aren't going to talk about that, are we? And just put some decoration on the back here. And where are the others? I've got some here that I did with Becky's. What's now? Oh, go crayons. Help, help. These I'm going to send out. These are my sweaters. Penelope, apples, I like that a lot better. These were the fall ones, and I did that. This was yellow. This was a yellow jacket. I'm going to send these back to me. I did four. I didn't exactly follow the prompts. So, what I want to do now... And I hope it isn't going to bore you guys. I'm afraid I'm boring you all the time. Oh. But what I really want to do... Let me hunt for it. Oh, here's my purse. Uh, you know what I think? Here's this purse we were working on. And I think this is okay. Uh, except for the part where I put it on with no... This was with the GAC, and this was with GAC with the paint. This was, um, and I don't think I mixed paint. I just put varnish on it, the varnish medium, and this was plain paint, and it's kind of cracking there. I don't like that. I'll probably redo this whole bottom, but let's just coat this with some of that GAC. And I think that's what I'll do. And then I'll just let it dry overnight. And we will do a larger. Oh, Mary. He's got so much stuff here. We will do a larger Penelope on here. Can't you see a Penelope? Not, not the red, but just the Penelope on here. Yeah. Maybe she'll be fairly large. She'll come right in here. And I might even have her feathers coming up over this way. So I think I'm going to give this a coating of the GAC. And then I'm just, I'm going to, well, it says to heat set it. So maybe I will. Now let's take this and kind of tuck it in like that. And let's see what happens. You can only experiment and try with this stuff. And uh, let's put my scissors away. Put my pen over here. Uh, I'd like to... Did I paint with this brush or glue with it? I think I'll use this brush. That other brush has glue in there and I need to wash it out. This is fine. I think I'm just going to put some gack some gack on here because this is the only side I'm going to work on here this side I don't think I'll do anything to this side I might repaint the bottom and I could can I take these off no they're pretty much hooked on there so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna kind of flatten that out 
and I guess it's this that screws off here. And I have no idea. I would think that you wouldn't need a lot, but I'll put some. She says, now Lori said, don't let it puddle, no puddles. So let's just spread it out. Now I probably will not, I'll probably be doing something in there on this side. Most of it's going to be over here. I probably don't need a whole lot. Let's, let's kind of sponge some of that off. It's going to be up on this half, my design. Let's kind of smooth all this out and some up in here. Well, now that I'm doing it, though, I think I will just kind of spread it in there and make it go with everything. No puddles, she said. Well, let's try that. Let's see what happens. But what, 10 or 12 drops of this stuff seem to go a long way. Kind of sticky. I'll let it dry good here. It's interesting to try different things. This has embossed in here Stone and Company. S-T-O-N-E and Company. Yeah, we had a really cool day here in Nebraska. We thought it was going to get up into the 90s yesterday, but it didn't quite get that warm. And then today, it was in the 60s, 57, almost the mid-50s. Now, in the winter time, when it gets to be mid-50 in January and February, we think that that's warm. Oh, it's warming up. Spring is coming. Well, after you've had... 90 degree weather, 90, 94 degree weather, and it gets down to 50, 57, winter's coming. <laughs> All right, I think I'm just going to let this air dry now. And uh, next time I work on this, I'm not sure when, sometime next week. I will put Penelope in here. And I think I'll let her white hair. But I don't think I'll do that white with the flying liner. I'm not sure what I'm going to do it with. Uh, but I think I'll let her white. I call it hair. Her white fuzzy boa. I guess you could call it. Her hair is tucked under her hat. This I guess is just a. A boa. A shawl. It's eyelash lace is what it is. Whoops, I pulled her tag off. Let's give her tag back. There. So she's going to go on here. 
but we're just going to let that, I'm just going to let it air dry. I'll hang it, I have a hook that I hang it on. I'll hang it up after, after chat. But what I'd like to do, and this is what I'm afraid is going to bore you guys, but if I bore you, bore you, I want to do another yummy art journal page. I want to do another yummy art journal page. And I've been doing, I'm going to do them in this. Now I'm going to do them, in, I'm going to choose a page in here. And then do them. This is the last one that I did here. And I did it really fast. I, I did it Saturday, was it Saturday? Thursday morning. So this one was really fast. But this is going to become a altered magazine. This is the October autumn issue. Special autumn issue of the of this year of the Victoria magazine. It's got a lot of color in it. So this will be fun. So the way I'm going to do this, and let me reach over here and get my list. Um was the first one I did. The second one I did is floating around here. Let's get a paper to write on. And I need to get so that I need to get set up so that I have all these set up before I start. I'm not quite to that point yet. We're, we don't need Mary Jane's magazine. And I'm just going to hopefully use this pen. And I call it yummy, Y-U-M-M-Y, and it stands for um, your unique mixed up magazine. And then the Y just is yay. <laughs> and this is an art prompt challenge. And this is 9, 27, 28, 20, 27, 2020. Now, I had 13 prompts here, but I found that theme, color, and media. I'm going to make color and media the same. So I'm going to put theme, color. Color is, is comes off of the page that we reference in our, in our inspiration magazine. But media means what did they use? Did they use watercolor? Did they use horse? pastel what did they use and I find that those two go together really good so I'm going to make them one prompt um, technique means like did they coffee dye it did they stitch on it that type of thing shape I'll pick up shape off of my reference page Element and image I put together as a prompt. So I'm trying to get these prompts to make a little bit more sense. Collage. I'll look at that reference page and see if there's something that I can collage down on there. Uh, space. Space can mean a lot of different things. For right now... I'm looking at the, the page, the reference page out of the magazine. I'll pick a page, or Random Org will pick a page, and I'll go to that page. And then I'll divide the page mentally into quadrants. One, two, three, and four. And then I'll let Random Org pick which quadrant I'm going to work off of. And then I'll pick something off of that quadrant. Uh, like right here, there's a kind of a uh, lattice design in there. So I might zoom in a little bit more after I get started here. Let's clear that. Yeah. 
is going on here? Come on, I didn't want my calendar. Let's get out of that. Let's get out of that. We'll stay at random org. Let's go back over here. There we go. So, space. Words. Words could be journal spots. Um, media, I put up here. So, patterns. So, I'm still kind of trying to... Um, I'm trying to um, refine this game a little. I like to do a lot of prompts, though. Style means, like, is it... Uh, actually, style should go up here before technique, but I'm, I'll leave it down here right, for right now. Uh, style means, is it, uh, is it done like a cartoon? Is it, are you doodling? Or is it illustrative? Is it realistic? Is it glue booking? Well, glue booking would be a technique. But, uh, you know, style. Scribble. Uh, what, let's see, media patterns. Patterns I got. Um, uh, border. Border, I'll use a reference page out of my magazine and I'll look at something, but if it does not have a border on it, then I'll skip it. But this, say I got this page, this doodle page here. Well, see, this is, style could be whimsical. I see this as very whimsical. So whimsical is a style. But uh, right here, it's got a border. Right here, it's got a border. Right here, it's got a little bit of a border. So if I flip to this page uh, and use this page, I would probably put a border like one of these on my pages. So, But if, it, if I flip to a page, if it chooses a page that doesn't have any border, this really doesn't have a border, then I'll skip that prompt and I'll come down and get one of my alternates. And then the last one is to close your eyes. I had closed magazine. You close your eyes... And you flip to a page in the magazine and choose something off of that page. Flip to page. That's all I'm going to put. So my alternates, let's number these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Ah, I got twelve. So this could be a dirty dozen. <laughs> It could almost be a dirty dozen. All right, so my alternates, I got a lot of alternates. That's because it gives you choices. Um, I have line, texture, wild card, stencil, is an alternate now um i don't know stencil might be stencil dots and collage i got up here so collage is not really an alternate i got collage as a prompt stencil if i flip to a page and and uh and uh saw something let's let's just open a page here Okay, and if I was going to do stencil, I'd probably try to make me a stencil of this tree and just do it on the fly out of a piece of paper. Or maybe a circle. I might get out my circle stencil and use a circle. So I still want to use my magazine as reference. So I'm really, what I'm trying to do is pull things, techniques and images and and prompts out of this book without copying the image i'm just pulling from this book to do my page and it really is turning out fun okay now to get and this is where i mess up let's just draw some lines here after i get this all all uh worked out so that i'm good with this i think i'll do some master sheets so I won't have to go through this whole thing of drawing it all out. Take it to the library and do copies of it. 
Okay. Alternates. I'm pulling off of the page, and I am using, I try to document the, the reference magazine. The reference magazine that I'm using is the Art Journaling uh, October-November issue of Art Journaling. Art Journaling. October, November of 20. 20. All right, so what I do here, let's draw a line here. All right, now I have uh, in my in my journaling magazine, I've got 144 pages. And then I add four pages for the front and inside cover and the inside back and the back cover. So I've got 148 pages. So what I do is I go to Random Org, which is my favorite decision maker. <laughs> let's go to Random Org and uh, let's go back. Hopefully it'll let me go back. And between 1 and 148, 148. And get the sequence and then I start writing down the page numbers so whatever's on page four is going to be my theme that might be interesting 95 is going to determine my color and media 52 I'm going to pick a pay a technique on page 52 a shape on page 44 element or imagery on page 44 43 which is interesting collage some type of collage from page 76 I'm going to go to page 87 for my space and I'll have to go back to pick one through four there words is going to be 72 uh, patterns is going to be page 123 style page 64 that'll be interesting border is page 125 and then I get to close my eyes and flip to a page so let's do that now my eyes are closed you're gonna have to believe me and I'm just going to and I know whether I'm toward the front or the middle of the magazine but I don't know what page I'm on I'm on this page so I'm gonna pick something off of this page which ooh. Ooh, I love it. I love it. There's a there's an image there of a photo of like an old uh, vintage photo and it's got text written over her and it's stitched there, hand stitched. But we're going to put page 128 there. So now to determine the space on page 87 I know Mary has to make this harder than it is, but Mary's having fun. I'm just going to put in between one and four, one and four, and I'm going to let it pick a sequence, and I'm going to pick the second quadrant. So it's going to be the second quadrant of page 89, and let's go look just to, for the fun of it. 84, 85, 88, 89. So if I split this into four, one, two, three, and four. So I, I'll pick something off of here. What, a, what I see right now is very watery color blues and, and purples with some text on there. That's what I see in the upper right-hand corner. So now that I have it all set up, and that's the part that I should do off, off uh, when I do these games... And the other thing is, if I do this as a game with you guys, the only way you could join in is take, you would have to have a magazine that would have the same number of pages that I do, and then you'd flip to your magazine and pick these things. So this is kind of a game you play by yourself or, or find an art journaling magazine. I, I notice they all have about 144 pages. Or let's say you only had a magazine that had uh, 60 pages. 
and and it and one of these was like uh, 95 four would work 52 would work 44 43 these higher numbers may not work if your magazine only has 60 pages so what you would do is hopefully hopefully uh, um, well no you wouldn't see my list you would have to you'd have to do your own random org so I haven't worked out how you guys can play along with me other than I go and flip and pick something and you guys do it too. Um, so I'm not sure this is something we could play together. Uh, but I like doing it and I like doing it in my streams. So that part is a part we might need to work out. How could I, how could I make this variable enough and do the same type of thing so that you guys could play with me. The only way I could see would be if you have a magazine that has 144 pages or 148 pages. Or we could say, okay, I'm only going to use the first 60. Um, find out who, how many people are playing. Just say, how many people want to play in my stream? And just just say three other people were playing, if I'm lucky. And okay, and then find out from them what magazine. It doesn't matter which one they're using, but they need a magazine, hopefully an art magazine to give them techniques. And how many pages does it have? And then the person who has the least number of pages only do my random org through the least number of pages. So the person who has the least number of pages could play too. That might be fun. It's a little bit mixed up. I mean, it takes a little bit longer, but once you get going here, it's so fun. Oh, there's something else I wanna do. This magazine is going to be my, my base book. I wanna, alter this entire magazine now whether i'll do it with games or not i don't know but this magazine has 113 plus four plus four would be 117 pages so to find out the page that i'm going to work on that's the way it goes guess what i'm going to do i like to go to my favorite decision maker between 117 did I say 113 plus 4 is 117 I'm going to get sequence I'm going to work on hopefully page 29 let's see what's on page 29 I let it choose for me otherwise I'm spending all sorts of time Ooh, look at it. it's a nice fall theme weekend in Wisconsin ah, perfect choice random I gotta get my mug out of the way or I'm gonna knock it off. Sorry, Deborah. I don't wanna break my beautiful mug. Penelope, you're getting out of the way too. I don't wanna break you either. So, we're gonna work on this page. Wow, what fun. So, let's write this down. I'm working on page, let's see, page page that I'm going to work on, page in Victoria Mag, and what I'm altering is page uh, 29. It doesn't say what this is. Um, as it, no, 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 no. This must be in Lake Geneva here. Or does that go with that? It looks like it go. It could be a weekend in Wisconsin. A question of honor. I don't know if that goes with that or this. But I'm going to say it goes with this. This is a perfect page. But I'm going to get my color. The theme, I have to go to page four. I have to go to page four to get the theme. So let's see what's happening on page four here. Page four could just be a, well, one, one, two, three, four. So it's an index page. So I could pick 
I could pick ladies, hearts. I kind of like these ladies with long necks. I kind of like the ladies with the long necks. Oops, there goes my, it's got a lid on it. That was my empty tea glass went over the cliff. <laughs> That's why I can't keep that mug on here as I knock things off. Um, so I'm going to put ladies with long necks as my theme. So that's what I'm going to put here in Wisconsin is ladies with long necks. Ladies with long necks. And this can be really fun once you get going. Now, you can do this several ways, and I'm going to do it the as-you-go method. But I'm going to kind of do the first two prompts the theme and the color and the media, I'm going to kind of do it all at once. I'm going to draw my ladies on there and then, well, I could draw them on right now. As you go means I'm going to do a prompt over here. I'll draw some ladies with long necks. Then I want to go pick out what color I'm going to use. And it may not be this beautiful rust color, it may fall into the background. Uh, I'm going to pick my color and media next. But let's draw these, let, let's get inspired by these two ladies with long necks here. And I'm just going to use my pen. Hopefully I'll be able to see them. Now I don't want to copy them per se. I, wa I want the long neck. I'm going to have to use white. I might have to use a Crayola. <laughs> oh, I don't know if this white pen will, will work for me. That one's empty. I think this one I shaped. If it's shaking, you know, let's, this dot one's been working. Let's see. Yeah. So I don't want to copy them. I don't want to copy them. I need the long necks. So, like that. And, let's see. Let's, instead of giving her an oval face, let's make her face round. Let's make her round, because I don't want to copy the ladies. I don't want this to look like it came from here. It'll be on that theme, but it, this is not going to look like that. Instead of giving her a hat, a long hat, let's give her a, let's see. Let's give her a, hmm. What kind of a hat? I could give her a pillbox hat. Well, for right now, I might change that. For right now, I'm just going to give her a square pillbox hat, which we don't wear anymore. Just like that. Now, there's another lady, and she doesn't have a hat on. And she's got... I, I do like her long neck, though. Let's bring her, her long neck down this way. Come on. Down this way. And down that way. Ooh, I like that. Let's do this lady a little bit better here. We could give her a baseball cap. Let's give her a baseball cap. Let's give her a... Sort of like that. <laughs> now, she's got kind of an oval face, too. I don't want my ladies to look like they came off of that page, but I want to get inspired by that page. So we're going to give her a round... Sort of a round face, too. And she doesn't have a hat on. And I'm going to leave it that way. And let's give her some long hair. Just kind of like that. And let's let her hair come down this way. Alright, there's my ladies with long necks. Now I need to... Let's put this pin away. That was just to get something on the page. I have more fun doing this, I have to tell you guys. This is my kind of fun. Let's go back to... It sounds confusing, but the more you do it, the more fun it is. 
So back to my prompts. Let's see, I don't need this one anymore. Let's pull this away. I've got to find the, the other one that I did. All right, color and media is on page 95. So let's go to see what page is on page 95. This is a good way to get inspired by your old art magazines that just sit around and stack up. 94, 95, color and media. Well, this is all the art journaling covers, but I see a, I see some light blues reds and pinks and i see green in there but this looks like it might be who knows what this is painty i'm going to call this acrylic there's a bird on there there's a blue in that bird and there's some flowers so blues and pinks blacks and browns and yellows and reds you know the colors are pretty basic but mostly blues and pinks. Blue. Blues and pinks are dominant. Which is not in my palette. <laughs> Blue, pink, red, uh, brown. Maybe some gray. And then, of course, there's white and black on almost everything. White and black. So I'm going to try to stay within those colors. That's five colors with the two. That's kind of trying to limit your color palette. Instead of having 16 million colors, you have five. Blue, pink, red, brown, gray, white, and black. And I'll bet you I better put in a little yellow. I better put yellow in there. Just a very light yellow. All right. So the technique is on page 52. Let's see what 52 is. Let's see if I can get inspired. Heartbeat Trilogy. Oh, does that look distressed or what? And it's reds, yellows, and blues, and a little bit of green. Oh my gosh, just get some paint on the page and you'll feel better kind of days. Let's see. This is just introducing. Let's see if she talks about any. I think it's mostly painting. She's talking about putting emotion on her page. My creative obsession is alcohol, both ink and rubbing alcohol. And answering the question, what if I did this? My art journal is a place that holds me. I'm just trying to see what this lady is talking about here. Uh, see if she gives any. First, I randomly coat pages with a layer of white gesso. Once I choose, once dry, I choose three colors plus black and white. I squeeze out each color and use a paintbrush to create lines from left to right. I don't see lines on there. Making big strokes to cover the entire page and letting the brush mimic the heartbeat of the day. The strokes continue to the page on the right without lifting the brush. I think they're talking about this. Capturing her heartbeat. Heartbeat. So she's trying to capture her heartbeat. This is her heartbeat. I use Dina Wakely's line by Ranger because of the little squeeze bottles makes it easy to draw out my heartbeat of the day. The type of paper is more important than the journal type. When creating, try limiting your supplies to a set number of colors. Well, we talked about that. Only create what feels good to your soul. Don't force it. Judge it or criticize it. A color wheel is your friend. Keep a basket or container nearby to toss those background pages in. Okay. So I think what I can call the technique, I think the technique is, uh, she's calling it the heartbeat of the day. Um, I 
I'm trying to figure out what I would call her. She's doing paint. Uh, I'm not sure. She's, she's talking about capturing her heartbeat. She says she randomly coats with a layer of white gesso. Choose three colors, black and white. Squeeze out each color and use a paintbrush. All right, let's we'll come, we'll do that right now. I'm just going to follow her instructions and see what I get. I have to this the colors are reds, yellows, white, and a little bit of blue, and I have all of those on my color: red, a yellow, white, and blue. Yellow, red, white, and blue. So let's go to my. I'm gonna put. I'm gonna put paint. But then I'm gonna put. I'm gonna put heartbeat. Capturing heartbeat. It's more emotional. She's trying to get the vibe of her day down on the page, and uh, it probably means more to her personally than it does to me when I look at this. But we'll see. Heartbeat. Uh emotion but it's mostly paint I think so let's go to this beautiful page and I'm not going to touch my ladies I think I might leave a heart in for her heartbeat but she puts a light gesso now I do not have a light gesso but I have a light white paint so we're going to follow her I don't use gesso per se uh, I usually just use craft paint. And that would be right in here, I hope. Uh, right here. Right here. This is my one that's almost empty. I'm going to clean that out so it doesn't. And is this the one I used? No, that one's. Well, you know what I'm going to use is I'm going to use my buttermilk. No. What am I going to use? Mary's just deciding. Mary, this is where it gets boring for you guys, I think, because I have to look and see where did I put my where did I put my other white paint? Up here? Up here? Here? No. Well, I'm going to go ahead and open this one. I don't know what I did. May have, I may have put it beyond my reach. <laughs> Let's open this. Let's see. I may have opened this one already. Yeah, I think I did. <laughs> I need some wax paper. What are you going to do to those leaves, Mary? I don't know. I'm following the technique, though. I'm going to follow the technique. I've already got white on there for my ladies. I'm going to set you guys aside so I don't paint your face. And I need room on my desk. And we've got to move this magazine aside. Well, I'll be reading from it, though. All right. And I don't need a whole lot. And that's really juicy. That's the juicy stuff. And now she says she puts a layer of gesso. I'm going to follow her directions for her technique. First, I randomly coat pages with a layer of white gesso. Once dry, I choose three colors. All right. So let's just randomly and we're going to call this gesso and I'm going to do it down in here just like that kind of and it doesn't have to be random means don't coat the whole page and I think I want to go in a horizontal movement although I could go in a pretty cold for fun. And I'm just kind of scraping this on my page. 
Now it doesn't look like much now. I don't want to cover up all the autumn colors, but yeah, we're getting them messed up. There goes my weekend in Wisconsin. Oh well. There we go. Once dry. So let's dry it a little. Notice I didn't touch their faces. I don't know. Do I want them to have leafy faces? Let's touch their faces. I can still see them. I don't know if you guys can still see them, but they're there. I'll be bringing them out again. Okay, let's dry it. Pretend that's gesso randomly placed all over the page. I kind of like how those leaves are peeking through, though. Okay, let's put that back. All right. Once dry, I choose three colors plus black and white. I squeeze out each color and use a paintbrush to create lines from left to right, making big brush strokes to cover the entire page and letting the brush mimic the heartbeat of the day. <sighs> the heartbeat of my day. Today was Sunday. I don't, I'd have to think about the heartbeat of the day thing. I'm not going to dwell on it. It's Sunday. I relax. The strokes continue to the page on the right without lifting the brush. For the third piece, I pressed it into each of the first two pages to complete the trilogy. I think she's talking about these. She didn't say how she did this. She didn't say how she did this. So, I'm going to use that... And I'm going to, I think I'm going to use some more of that buttermilk because this looks like buttermilk to me rather than white. I'm going to go back to the buttermilk, the yellow, and the red here. She really didn't say how she accomplished this. And that was my reference page. So I'm just going to draw some inspiration off of it. And I'm going to go back to my buttermilk, I think. I liked my buttermilk. It's more of a creamy color. Buttermilk. <sighs> orange and orange and well, orange is yellow and red. So buttermilk. A little of this crimson, I think. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm going to use. I have all sorts of reds here. Uh, but I'm going to use Georgia Clay. I think I'll use my Georgia Clay. Because that kind of that kind of looks like Georgia Clay. And some yellow. Yellow. So yellow. And Georgia clay and buttermilk. I think what I'm going to do is go through all my paints and take off these little cellophane things. If there's one thing that irritates me, it's these. That said, let's move on. So I'm just going to kind of scrape this on. I think I need more buttermilk. Don't ask me if I know what I'm doing. I'm kind of feeling my way through this. And I'm just going to, I don't want to put it on too thick though. And I don't want to put it across the whole page. I want to leave some of the stuff. Of course, I've already covered up those leaves, so, oh well, 
Oh well, she said. Okay, let's grab a little of the yellow. And let's just dot that in there. Oh, she's a blonde. <laughs> now that's sunshine peeking through. And let's, that Georgia clay wasn't mixed up. And let's just kind of, yeah, I kind of like that. And let's kind of pull it. Does that look like a heartbeat of the day? <laughs> Does that look like your Sunday? That looks more like my Sunday. Let's put some more buttermilk on this. I'm pretty happy with this but my ladies with the long neck I can't let them get I can't let them get covered up so let's kind of make sure I don't have them that's a baseball cap she's got a baseball cap on all right I can still kind of see them Boy, that Georgia clay. Was that Georgia clay? That was Santa red. <laughs> I thought I had Georgia clay. I had red. Oh, well. It said red anyway, so that's what I'm going to use. All right, I'm going to pull this up and away and dry this a little. I'm going to put my paints away as I use them. I thought I had the Georgia clay. I pulled the red instead. That's what you get, Mary. Let's go to the yellow. All right, let's dry this off. These are really gonna be ladies with long necks. And let's go see where I am on the prompt. So it's a heartbeat of the day. My heartbeat of today was Sunday. It's kind of a, I wouldn't call today a sunny day. It was kind of a laid back, sleepy day, gray and cold. And what I have, buttermilk and sunshine on there. All right, let's go to the next prompt. Wherever I wrote them down at. Did it go over the cliff too? No, right here. Got to keep track of those. All right, so we've done prompts one, two, and three. I'm not so sure about three. Heartbeat of the day. She used paint. And it was emotional heartbeat. So we're going to go pull a shape off of page 44. Let's see what I get on page 44. Maybe I can work it in with my long-necked ladies. Page 44. Oh. Well, a shape. There's not much on there except for rectangles. So let's use a rectangle. There's a tag shape. This whole thing is a tag. Maybe I could put my long neck ladies on tags or paint tags around them. Yes, maybe I can. So what I'm thinking, let's get my white pen out again. What I'm thinking, let's draw my long neck ladies if I can. And she's got a baseball cap on. I don't know if it's going to work so good over this paint, though. She's got a baseball cap. This isn't working good. And she is here. 
like that. And she didn't have a, she did not have a cap on. She had really long hair coming down this way. She's more of a Godiva type. And this is wet, so I gotta be careful. She's got a baseball cap on. I'm put a round button up there. But a shape. I think I'm going to put them on tags. So I'm just going, this is my shape, is a tag shape. So let's see, her her tag, well her, her, her hair is going to flow off of her tag. Um... Hmm, I might have to redo that. Um, dee -dee -dee -dum. I want her tag a little shorter. And like that. And it's going to be long. Tag shape. Like that. And like that. And like that. Now... Since she's got a baseball cap on, I'm going to give her a t-shirt. And I'll bet she has a number. And I see her with a crown. Let's give her a crown. Let's give this lady a crown. I just feel like she deserves a crown. Just because I want to. <laughs> And let's bring that tag. Instead of making it shorter, we're going to make it longer. Like that. And she is such a sweetie, she's falling off of her tag. Her hair is coming off almost over this way. Alright, so the shape is tags. T-A-G. Tag. Element or image on page 43. Element or image. I see a number one five. One five. I'm going to pick that for that lady's baseball shirt. One five. Number one five. So it doesn't have to be hard. Just something. Number one five. And maybe on a Sunday afternoon they're playing baseball. And I don't know what the queen is doing. there. Maybe she's a cheerleader instead of a queen. Oops, cheerleaders wear crowns. <laughs> now, where am I going? I don't think I'm going to put her hair that long because I need to get a 1 5 in there. 1. And I'll go back and paint all this after I get it done, I think. I'm just kind of putting it in. I should start painting it pretty soon. And if she's a cheerleader, she should have a, um, probably a t-shirt on, not a sweater for baseball. And instead of a crown, she should have something else on instead of a crown. What do cheerleaders wear? And her hair looks too much like a princess. So let's give her a bob. Let's give her a bob. And she's still long neck, so let's just ignore the hair coming down. And uh, she's long necked, so ignore all that. I should paint that out. And instead of a instead of a crown, I'm just going to paint that out. She doesn't have anything. I should have left it alone. Where's my paintbrush? Let's go paint that out. Mary's talking to herself again. This is what happens when I get into the zone. Let's pull. Let's paint it out with this one. I just got the, that part in there. Let's, uh... Let's paint this out. Let's paint this out. We need more yellow and cream. Put my paint away. So she doesn't, she lost her crown. 
That's what happens when you're in cheerleading. <laughs> She's still a long neck lady. Oh, okay, I'll come back to that later. Let's paint all that out. I'm, I've lost my buttermilk here. This all gets painted out. And that way I can make that tag shorter after all. Okay, I'm good. I like that a lot better. Just a little change. So I know definitely this lady's playing, I said baseball, it's probably softball. And this lady is probably a, a cheerleader. Maybe she's the coach. I don't know. In Wisconsin? <laughs> yep. All right, we're going on to the next prompt, which is collage. On page 76. Collage on page 76. We're just going to see an element on page 76 and see if I can collage something from it. Not off of it. Oh, look. It's that bird and the rose. My art therapy, taking two or three colors and mixing them with light gray, dark gray, and black. She made that bird out of a telephone book, it looks like. She collaged that bird together. This page needs a bird. We're going to do that bird. So I'm just, for collage, I'm going to write bird. That, that bird is what I did on my other page, if you watched my my other, I'll check that. So it's done out of, it looks like a telephone book. I don't have a telephone book here, but I have, I have a text that I could use. Let's see, let's turn around and see what I have behind my chair. That's some sort of text paper. Do, 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 do. I'm looking. I'm looking. Oh. What's this? Fabric? Maybe Loretta sent me something that I can use in Happy Mail. She sent me a lot of text tape of, uh, maybe there's something in what Loretta sent me that I can use. I have it handy here. That's why I'm saying that. This? I got that music. Could the bird have music paper? They use text. Oh, look. I have that. That's pretty cool. And it's milky, but I kind of like that, too. Let's see what else is here. Ooh. She sent me these. These are Tim Holtz. These aren't text. This is text. I like that. And that would make a nice bird. And then it was collaged. She also sent me some some images like that. Hmm. I think I'm going to use that. And then I want some... Let's put this back. Let's go, let's go to this little book I got from Shelley. And I can pull a page of text out of this. So let's look at my, let's look at my image here. We're doing this bird. And I'm going to use, it's, it's green here, but we're going to make mine a brown color. I'm just going to use that much. We'll save this for something else. Let's cut this off. 
and it's got some text. Looks like just bits of text paper in there. And I'm not sure what that is. We could use that nest. I kind of like that nest. Let's hold it. Let's see. Let's draw the bird first. Let's draw the bird on here. So it's got a it's got a wing. And as you can see, this wing, can you guys see? Yeah. The wing from from its neck to the tip of the wing comes out more than the tail. The bird tail kind of comes a, a little bit uh, uh, in from the end of the wing. And the reason I'm saying that is I can make my wing come clear out here when I draw it. So sort of like so. And then like this. And then it kind of fishtails like that and in and then the head of the bird kind of swoops up like that sort of and its beak and then it comes down and this wing comes down like that and like that. I kind of like that. So let's cut that out. That's going to be my bird. That's the shape. And I don't care if some of the black lines are showing because it'll probably get drawn and outlined anyway. Do I want to save this? I think I do. I save all my little scraps unless they're too useless. Now, I'm really into this, so I'm not following chat too much. I'll come back out when I feel like it. <laughs> I'm having too much fun. Boy, that's rude, Mary. I'll come out when I feel like it. I should make sure I got some mods in here. <laughs> Janet's still here, I think. Let's see. Mina says, do any of you know if Mary has posted her yummy method anywhere? I want to copy it down. I haven't yet. Um, Mina, I'm still trying to, to refine the method. I would like to figure out a good way where you guys can play along with me. Right now, I'll try to get what I have posted. But right now it's kind of a one-person game because I haven't figured out how you guys, unless you follow the prompts that I'm doing in here, and you do the prompts like if I call out uh, the colors and you use those colors, if I call out a tag, if you put a tag on your page. But I would rather you guys have a magazine of your own and I call out, if we can get one that has... Uh, you know, three or four of us are playing if we could get a, a range of pages that we all have. Then we could go to those pages. So right now, I really haven't... I'm still kind of refining it. It, it doesn't feel refined to me. And now, I like this bird nest. I might come back to that bird nest because I like that. Bird nest in her hair. 
bird nest on our cheerleader's head. <laughs> All right, but I might, I might uh, start using this little journal that I got from uh, Crafty Mamas. This is a field guide to butterflies, and it's got beautiful butterflies in here, and it's got some wonderful color plates, but it's got a lot of text. And uh, I think it, I think I'm just going to use it as I would any other book. And I'll probably, you know, I'll probably make this into a junk journal. So I'm not going to use everything. But I'll probably pull out some text. Let's see. These are species of butter. See, it's got beautiful plates, color plates in here. I'll leave those alone. Here, this is this page. I think I'll just take this page out. Yep. Well, um, looks like I got the center of a looks like I got the center of a stitched signature here. So I got two pages. We're just gonna use it as a art journal junk journal. Um Let's put it this way. Maybe it would be better if I say um, it's Sunday night. I uh, Next Friday night, try to find a book with uh, in range a page between 1 and 125. You could have between my art journal that I'm using. You need to find an art magazine. And I'll try to get this documented and put in Fibsville. But if you could find an art magazine that has page, pages 1 through 144, that would be nice. That has the front and back cover on it. You know, just find a Somerset magazine if you have it. Um, I'm using the art journaling, but I have used the Somerset Studio. And I have the... What is that other field guide one? I have a couple that I've been using. But what I like about these is they're artsy. And we can pull the art techniques out of them. If you use like a Mary Jane magazine or this Victoria magazine. Um, it's, it, you know, you can't pull much art. You can pull the theme like apples in a basket or apples in a box. But you can't pull the art technique like collage a bird. So try to find an art magazine that has at least 144 pages. If you can't find one that has 144, at least 100. And then from there, what I'll do is I'll copy down these prompts. I'll post them. And I'll do the random org before we start playing the game. And then we'll go down and we'll play the game. And we'll see how it works. Mina. I think this is the first yummy game video where she explains it as she goes. I did one as I go um, Thursday morning. But I did it really fast. I mean, I didn't even have the prompts written down. I just went to a magazine and picked out on my own. I didn't do the random org thing. So, I like As You Go. I like As You Go because it seems to be falling in pretty good here. Okay, I have the bird. I have the text. And here, see where they, they collage little bits of text down in here. Right in there and on the tail. So that's what I'm going to do. I don't need a whole lot because this bird already has text on it. So I'm just going to take a bit, a bit off of this. Let's open it up. I've got a double page. Let's take a bit from here. And this might be all I need. So the game's going to have to be refined if several of us are playing. But that, I didn't mean for it to work perfectly all the time. I knew I was going to have to refine it. Let's see, I think I like the solid text here. 
So let's pull a little and it's not showing up too much. I might I might have to uh, that bird is a brown and in here he's more of a green. So I might get out my green and kind of make him green or blue. One of my colors is blue, so let's make him a light blue. Just a light blue wash. Here we've got this Key West. Key West here. Whoops. I didn't shake it up. Yeah. The problem is, is I don't have six hands. <laughs> We don't need a whole lot when we do this. I'm learning not to put so much paint on my palette. And I just kind of want to give it a... don't even want that much. I want to wash. I want to wash. I just want to give him some color. Because I want my text to show up. It is a fun game to play, and I'm sure there a lot of you have art magazines laying around that you can use. All right, let's give that a little dry. Because it's handy, I'm going to use one of Norma's. Branson Limo sent me this. These little glue pins. And I love them. If I can get the cap off. <laughs> and I'm going to put a bit of text on him. Now let's get the magazine out and show you what I'm doing. I'm doing this area right in here. And I probably, he goes on his tummy more. Maybe a little skinnier. A little rougher, right in there. And there's a little, there's a little space and then there's some more. So I'm gonna put that right like that. And then there's some on that tail and on this tail. Let's do this. I think this was one I used before and I didn't clean the cap off. There it goes. Oh, my bird's curling up on me. <laughs> I'm going to put that right in there. Oops. And glue this little bit. And he's going to go right in here. Let's see if I can't heat this from behind and make it quick clean. Okay, now it's got a little bit more text on the tail and a little square Actually, that square I'd like to have as a bolder text. And it kind of goes this way. Oh, I kind of like that. 
only this is a little bit darker so can I can I mix some yellow with that yellow with the yeah. if I can get a darker We'll give him a red breast there. Kind of a little darker shade in there. And where's my glue? What'd I do with the glue pen? It was here a minute ago. <laughs> There's the cap. There it is. It's up there. We'll just have a little a little dab. And it's going to go right here. Now, she did draw a bird, and uh, an eye and a beak on this bird. That does have an eye and beak drawn on it. Let's see, the tail feathers have some text on them. So I'm just going to use this little, little square here, and we're going to bring a... A piece of maybe the other way a piece of text there and a piece kind of going in there like that and it's really hard to move them around because they're so tiny let's glue the tail feathers first here. Put this piece right in there. And this piece I'm going to bring off this way. Now for me, I can see you probably you guys probably can't see but I can see there's text and writing in there. And the, the this is more predominant text because it's a telephone book. But I know that there's text in there so I'm going to kind of leave it like that. But I am going to draw the I am going to draw the uh eye and the beak on there. And we'll put my pages back in my book. I might need them again for some texty collage. I'll keep that book handy. Thank you, Shelly, Crafty Mama, for the book. All right, where's this bird going to be flying, though? On this page, it's flying up toward the top. And I don't want to cover up the long necks, and I don't want to cover up my wing. So I think I'm going to make my bird. Shall I make my bird fly upside down? Nah, let's make it fly right here. I do think that's the best place. Because I think I'm going to end up putting that nest on her head. So I think I like that there. And then I'll have to emphasize her long neck, though. And I think I'll do that right now with some buttermilk paint. Let's do some buttermilk paint. And wash out my brush a little. I don't want to lose her. I don't want to lose her long neck. My scissors. <laughs> There's a little tech scrap. All right, let's. I just want to get that long neck in there. I don't want to lose this. Because that's the whole theme of the page, are long necked ladies. And let's paint her neck in. Now, let's give that a little dry.
The only reason I made her a baseball player is that I didn't want to use the same hat that was on that other lady. So instead of giving her a big straw hat, I gave her a baseball cap. And I had a crown on this lady, but I took it off because I think I'm going to put that bird nest on it. Whatever I did with the bird nest. But let's put the bird down first. I'm not going to worry about the bird nest until, until I get the bird on there. So I'm going to put my bird down to the lower instead of up up in here because I think it'll interfere with the others. I think right in here might be a good place for these. And shall I do this glue? I think I will. I think I will. Oh, I need to draw the bird and the beak, the eye and the beak on him. All right, where's the cap? All right, I think that's pretty gluey. And that bird is going to go right down here. Let's get this little piece of wax paper. It's pretty good. And let's draw a beak. A beak. And an eye. I think the eye was just uh, a round dot. Now I'm going to, because I like my black lines so much, I'm going to outline that bird, but I have to let it dry a little because that's going to ruin my pen if I try to draw through it. So maybe it's a fly ball. <laughs> oh, the shape was the tag. The collage was the bird. The shape is the tag. I got tag shapes back behind them. Reading my prompts back over. So, now I'm ready for the space. And the space, if you remember, was on page 89, and it was the second quadrant. And it was really blue and page 89. Or was it 87? I looked at 89. I think it's supposed to be 87. I'm going to use 80. Let's see what's on page 87. Ooh, I like that better. Look. I think that I wrote 87, but I read 89 when I was going over it. I think that's 87. This is how Mary plays the game. Now I see a, a uni, unif, plane universe. Now I see a universe connected by a thread. That weaves... Throughout all that is, was, and will be. A living uni that is alive. Magic connected by universal. So it's it's kind of broken text in there. But I like that text. It's outline text. Now I don't have to use that same quote. So what I'm going to write for my space element 
is outline text. Outline text. And I went to page 87 and I've chose number two. Random Org gave me number two. So that's one, two, three, and four. This is two here on my page. And on here, if you divide this in fourths, two would be up in here and there's outline text. Now I'm not going to use her same quote. I'm going to use something else. So, um, let's see. What can I use? I like to go to the Bella Grace magazine. Do I have one handy? I like their quotes. I like their quotes. Do I have a Bella Grace? I've got a Magnolia. And, oh, I've got this, yeah, I've got this field guide Bella Grace. I like to pull quotes out of here. But I also got a quote book by women the last time I went to that library sale so I need to get it out and use it too but we're, let's figure let's find a quote <laughs> will everything still be okay if you sit this one out <laughs> I like that I think that's what I'll use I just opened it up that fits could you see could you see her with a bird nest on her head and say will everything still be okay if you sit this one out I like that. I like that. But now I'm using words off of page 72. So let's see what words are on page 72. So maybe I might need to combine those. Words on page 72. Do you create, decorate the cover of an art journal before or after the journal is complete? it says you judged her so i'm going to take you judged her and put it in here but i still like this quote i'm going to combine the two so the words i'm kind of doing both of these prompts at the same time cuz they i'm using outline text here and the words on page 72 are you judged her If I can get, I've got 10 things in my lap. Right down here, this is page 72. It says, you judged her. So I'm going to put in here, you, Y-O-U, judged her. And this is not in, uh, this is not in uh, outline text. I want to make sure I'm spelling it right. You judged her. And I'll put little boxes around that. And I might go around that with white in the end. But up here, my words are you judged her. So that one's done. So I'm going to do outline text here. And what I like when I pulled the Bella Grace magazine out, what I like to get my quotes off of, will everything still be okay if you sit this one out? I think I'm just going to put sit this one out on there. So that's going to be my outline text. Sit this one out. So let's write that in outline. Sit this now. I know I want to put that bird nest in there. What happened to my bird nest? What happened to my bird nest? Where did I put my bird nest? 
Oh no, I lost the bird nest. This, this happens when I'm doing dirty dozens with Becky. I lose things. I'm going to set you guys aside. I hope it didn't fly over the cliff. I don't need the buttermilk right now. I might need it again, though. Where's my bird nest? Oh, I liked it. I thought I'd put it up here. Let me stand up. I thought I'd put it up here. Did it fly off? I don't see it. Oh, there it is. Yay! I found it! I'm going to put the bird nest on her head. I love that bird nest. Let's do that right now. So maybe we've got this long-necked lady being a really good softball player. And this lady is the cheerleader who's kind of a diva lady. I don't know why she's got a bird nest on her head. Probably because that other really good lady was saying, you can't play softball. You just set this one out. And it says you judged her. This has nothing to do with Wisconsin. <laughs> and the beautiful fall colors just got lost on this page. I'm just cutting raggedy pieces here for the twigs of the nest. Instead of a crown, she's going to have a bird nest on her head. Now... You and I know what that is. Somebody looking at that may not realize that that's a bird nest. I think I'll, I think I'll cut it a little even, more even in here. Like, like that. Well, that'll all fall in when I paint. I kind of like that. <laughs> so that's going down. And this is going to say, set this one out. Set this one out. Set this one out. See how they kind of... As you work, they kind of tell a story as you go. You know, I didn't make this up beforehand. And it's kind of telling its own little... The page is telling us what it wants to be. These long-necked ladies <laughs> are having a problem. One's a diva and one's a softball player. A diva with a bird nest on her head. Where's my wax paper? Now, let's dry that all down. Now, I kind of wiped out the trees in the background by putting all that white paint on there. I wish I wouldn't have because I'd like to have that show through. But, oh well. So, set this. Let's see. I think I'm going to put one in here. Oh. And. And I'll make the E up in here. E, kind of squeeze it in. One, and out. O, U, T. And 
and over here it says you judged her. Now let's outline this bird a little bit more. Yeah. And I can make an outline around the bird to outline the, mimic the outline on the text. I think that's what I'll do since it did that. I didn't plan it that way. This is, um, you know, I, I kind of got away from art journaling and did sketching and drawing and collage and reverse collage and all of that. This kind of gets us back into doing actually art journaling. This reminds me of an art journal page here. All of these ones that I've done. All right. So we're ready for prompt nine is patterns. Patterns on page 123. And you know what? I keep saying I need to move this style up. Um, style. And what was the other one I needed to move up? Space, collage, element, shape, technique. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put a note to move style up in here. Uh, maybe right after theme. So let's go look at page 123 for patterns and see what kind of patterns we can see on page 123. I see lace. I see lace and text. This is page 123. I don't see a lot of evident patterns. Oh, I see some patterning in up here. Kind of, uh, how can I draw that? Kind of teardrop sort of things like, let's draw one. It has a loop like that. Kind of a teardrop shape. Light shining on it. And then it has a dark shape around that, like that, and then another one out here, kind of a wood grain pattern, only not wood grain, it's kind of a refined wood grain, and this kind of comes like that, but it's real it's sketchy here. In here, in here, it's more of a graphic, like that. And then in here, where it meet, it has a a little center in here. And this is dark in here. And then over here, this comes this way. And this way, it's kind of a wood grain shape in its own way. And this way and that way, and then it repeats this way again. Like that. Now, sort of like that. Uh, center and a dark one around that. Like that. And 
this is all dark in here and dark in there and dark in here kind of looks like two big eyes it kind of looks like two big eyes on there too they kind of look like teardrops but that's the pattern yeah put my paint in the book in the paint that's what happens when you use this for art journaling <laughs> The dark, darkest before the dawn. So let's see if I can get, put this back. Let's move this out of the way. Let's see if I can get some of that pattern on here. This pen is not going to work, I don't think. Put my scissors away. Let's use this. Let's see, maybe I'll put some of that. See, I've got pattern. I'm gonna put C below. C below. Pattern. That's what I saw on that page. We did space. Style, I might have to skip because it's kind of got its own, I guess you could call this a whimsical style. Let's go look at page 64 and see what kind of a style was on page 64. Just because I'm curious. Oh, that's not very whimsical. That's a dress form. Travel the world over to find the beautiful. I think I'm going to have to make style a wild card. Because I don't see this fitting in with this. So I'll have to come back and pick one of my wild cards. And I did not pick num numbers here. So I might just pick wild card, wild card alternate wild card and do what I want for style but let's go ahead and put the pattern in pattern on page 123 the pattern I'm pulling from this area in here I don't think you can see it very well but it looks something like that so let's put I'm thinking right in here so I think I can put a a line like that, and a line like that. And then it has a line that comes around and down like that. Like that. And then in here, but here's the thing, my tag ends here. So I can only get a part of this pattern on there, which I like. The tag comes clear down to there. She's sitting here. These are my long necked ladies. We haven't forgotten them. Here's her baseball cap. And she's number one five. So I think I'm only going to put the pattern on this tag. Maybe right over in on this. Let's see. Let's just draw this like that, and like that, and let's bring it out again like that. Bring that down, and that around like that. Maybe make this a little thicker, and this one a little thicker. Maybe like that, and a line in there. And in 
here. I kind of like that. And here's my other whimsical lady over here. Now let's bring this pattern up a little bit more. Maybe around in here, sort of. It hit the bird nest. And up and around in there and kind of come that way. I kind of like that. And I think if I try to do it in here, it'll ruin it. But I'm going to define my tag a little bit more. And define this tag a little bit more. And let's see, you judged her. I kind of like that. So style, I said I was going to skip. I'm going to do an alternate. I'm not going to choose the style on that page, on page 64. I'm just going to pick one of these alternates. And I did not put page numbers. I wish I would have put page numbers, but I'm not going to go hunt them up. Line, texture, wild card, and stencil. I don't think I'm going to stencil texture or line. We could do some lines. Actually, these big black lines are, are really our lines. Let's put our... So this diva lady might be a really good softball player if she just had a chance. Even though she's got a bird nest on her head. I kind of like that. And I don't know if I can outline these with this and still... Maybe just on one side. Except for that one. <laughs> My pen's too fat. But it's given me nice bold lines. There, set this one out. Alright. Line, texture, and stencil. I like the idea of doing the stencil. After all, so let's do alt, alternate, and let's see what stencil do I want to use. Which stencil? You know, I like that one with all the round on it. And I think I got some red sticking here. It hasn't dried. And I'm only using red because it hasn't dried. <laughs> and let's cut my my stencil dried though. I mean my sponge is dried. Let's cut it off. And let's sponge some red. Hmm. On the shirt. Without the number, leave the nu leave the number alone. Can I get it on the shirt? I think I can. We shall see.
this is the part where I need to check and see what you where you guys how you guys are doing. I don't even know where I put you. Where'd you end up at? I need to check my phone. Oh, I'm still going. I don't know where you guys are though. <laughs> I don't know where I put my tablet. It's not in the waste basket. Where'd I put you guys? <laughs> You're lost. You're lost. I don't know where you went to. I put you someplace safe. I'll find you in a little bit. Oh, there you are. I just, I, uh, I checked you because usually when I get deep into what I'm doing is when my phone zonks out on me. So I wanted to step right, stop right in the middle of my stenciling and see if I was still going and where you guys went off to. All right, now the bird, I don't want to stencil the bird. So I'm being very careful to stencil around in here. I'm just stenciling her shirt. I kind of like that. And let's do her hat. And that's all I'm going to do for this prompt is just her shirt and her hat. For stencil. Her hat's kind of easy. Did I get it all? Yeah. There we go. So that was my alternate. Let me pull myself up to my desk again. All right. <laughs> when I'm going to put you back on the wastebasket. At least if I put you in the wastebasket, I know where you are. <laughs> All right. So we did this. We did the alternate. Which was stencil. Hat and shirt. And if you were working along with this, you may not do the same thing I do here. You, you may not have a bird shape. You may have a dog or cat or hat and shirt. So the next one is border. So I'm going to go to page 123 and see if I have a border on page 123. Page 123. Oh, which is this page. I had two, oh, 125, not 123, 125. It's the next page over. Well, it's got sort of a dark border around this one. And sort of a dark, a very thin dark border around this one. So I think I could do that on here with this big marker. But I'm going to hold that. I turn to page 128 to close my eyes. I'm coming back to the border. I'm going to go to 12. Um, I'm just going to come back to the border. I'll probably, I may want to do a little bit more to this page. Uh, let's go to page 128, which is right in this area, and choose an image. Now, when I went over there, the first thing I saw was this lady. Well, I don't want to put her on there, but I see butterflies here. What does that look like? I got a textbook with butterflies. Let yourself become living poetry, it says. Wouldn't that fit right in there? Let's get that little book out and see what... I'll bet I could use one of these black and white ones. And not, and not feel guilty about it. 
I don't want to use the colored ones. There's a black and white one in here someplace. Of course, now that I want, there's some black and white ones. But let's see what's on the back. More black and white ones. Well, I don't have to use out of here. I could use a Tim Holtz one. I don't really want to cut these up. Let's see if I can find a Tim Holtz one. Let's see what I can find. Oh. <laughs> you can see behind me, you would run. Run and run fast. I'm going to see if I can find a Tim Holtz butterfly in here. Pretty well have used a lot of these. Um, I've got a lot of people. I've got a lot of people, but my nature ones, I'm going to have to get me some more nature ones. I don't want to use those. Oh, in lieu of that, I could go back to the lady and pick one of these. I love the idea of putting the butterfly on there, but um, I can't put my hands on one right away. I don't think there's one in here. I've used all my butterflies. So let me... Let's go back. I'm not going to cut up my book. Let's go back to page. This is where I close my eyes and flip to a page. There's a lady here, a vintage lady, and she's got writing across there. So let's see if I can find a vintage lady. I could use her. I'd have to cut her off from her hubby. Skaters. Oh, look. There's her. There's these ladies in their swimsuits. The bride and a man. And Boy Scouts and a little Christmas and Christmas and Christmas. I think I'm liking her. She doesn't really fit on this page. <laughs> However, if I write on it and trim her out and maybe just kind of, well, let's split this page. You can split these. Let's put these away. I probably have a fussy cut image that I could use, but I got these in my hand. I don't know what I did with the lid to this box, the box to this. So I'll put them away later. <laughs> That's how I get a mess behind my desk. Let's grab a pin from Penelope. You can split these Tim Holtz photo references so I can save this. And separate it from that. This is layered paper. I don't know if you guys knew that. Well, of course you did. Here, it's already split right in there. So just kind of get a hold of it. And because this is layered paper, you get two for one if you're just doing collage work, which I am. So I'll save this. It almost patterns that. But I'm going to trim her out. Now this lady has writing. And you can't read that writing, but it's in white. And I might just copy this. I think in every piece of art we ever make is a part of our soul. And a part of our life's journey. And art journals are no exception. 
It was when creating this particular journal that I was having one of the hardest climbs of my journey. I like this part. I think every piece of art we ever make is a part of our soul and a part of our life's journey. I could put that on here. So I'm going to fussy cut her. Yes, I am. Let's put the cap on my pen. We're going to get this done. I'm just going to fussy cut her out. She's been sitting around forever. I might as well use her. She's got a pretty smile with bright red lipstick on it. Looks like it's been a photo touched, a retouched photo with that red lipstick on her. I didn't do that, did I? I don't know. I might have. I don't think I did, though. Did I put those red lips on her? I don't think I did. I think she came that way. <laughs> uh. The photo's been retouched. I don't think I could do it that nice. I'd probably smear her lips. Don't judge her. Now the question is, I think that I'm going to make her a long neck lady. I think I'm going to cut her like this. Where do I want to put her? She's kind of big for this page. She really looks best in here. And I'm covering up my pattern, but I could put some of that pattern back over there. So let's, let's get my pen out again. I'm going to bring her down in here. And I'm going to... Cut it like that and like that. And she's going to be right in the center. She's probably the she's probably the coach on these two ladies, telling this lady not to judge her, or telling this lady not to judge her. I don't know. She's going to fit in here, maybe down a little, like that. She kind of looks weird there, <laughs> but not if I put more of this over here. We'll put some of this over in here. And I might leave these two ladies just as they are and let her be the only focal image. Your eyes go right to her. I don't know if I like it there. I don't know if I like her. I like to think I'd like the butterfly better. I don't know. I think I'd like a butterfly better. She looks weird. Once I look at her, it looks like there's a three-headed monster there. I don't like it. I'm not going to put it on there if I don't like it, even though I got it out. <sighs> Butterflies. 
butterflies. I don't want to cut one of those. Surely I have a butterfly around here someplace. On one of those cards. Butterfly sticker in here someplace. Let me look at my stickers. Oh, there's a butterfly. There's a butterfly right there. Do I have any others? Let me look fast here. I think that might be my solution. I think I'll use that. Let me put these away. All right, that's what I'm gonna use. I don't like that lady there. She looks like a, it makes it look like she's a three-headed monster. There's another little butterfly there. There's another one there. I kinda like that one. We're going for it. You're all going, thank God. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah. You don't want to see behind me. Now, where do I want to put it? I still like it in here. I think I like it like that, almost like that, maybe down a little. Right in there. All right, I'm gonna glue it down because I don't trust the, I don't trust the stick them on them. They don't stick very good. I like that much better. But what I don't like now are my letters. And I'm going to come back to the border and put a thin border. I think I'm done with this magazine. So I think I've got all my prompts. Uh, where's my white pen? Let's, what I want to do with these outline letters is make them show up a little bit better. So, S, I, T, I've been in my own world doing this. I go into my own world. I'll be out when I'm done. O N E O U
I think I like that. I don't think there's much more I want to do to it other than put a thin border around the edge. Get Penelope back her needle. Put my scissors away for the 20th time. Uh, I guess this lady is going to... She'll go someplace. Maybe on my calendar. <laughs> I'll do that. I'll think I'm on the right track and then I put it down and all of a sudden I don't like it. So let's put a border on this. I think I'm done with my paint. I'm going to, and there's not much to save here, so I'm going to fold it up and throw it away. Oh, but you guys are in the trash can. <laughs> Uh, sorry about that. Well, you're safe there. I have to say, you're safe in the trash can. What I do here? Paint you to paint my pages together. Come on, just a little, just a little. There we go. I just wanna. Put a border on this. Get rid of the scraps here. I'm just putting a, a thin border. I might not put it where these words are. I don't want to mess them up. So there we go. Do I want to put a border over here? It's kind of got its own border. I think I'll just leave that. There we go. I think I'm done. I think I've done all the prompts. I feel like I've done some art journaling tonight. So I did the alternate. I did the alternate I did the border and I did the close your eyes and I saw that butterfly on that and so I put a butterfly sticker there I think I'm done set this one out I don't like the T and H up here let's outline it a little bit better I feel like I've done some actual art journaling with my long neck ladies. Let's sign it. And it's 9 27 2020. There we go. Now that's a little bit of a process, but I'm sh I'm learning how to shorten it down. Let's get you out of the trash can and talk to you. Uh, let's go to refresh. Deborah, it's so cute and sweet sounding. That says sit, S-I-T. 
I don't know if you can read that too well. That S kind of got lost in here. Sit, S-I-T. Now, the thing of it is, and I keep saying this before I chat with you, I did this pulling art techniques from this magazine. Now look at this magazine, and I've, I've noticed this on all my pages. If you look at this page, and you look at this magazine, and if you kind of thumb through, kind of thumb through here, well, this was an inspiration. That was the heartbeat page. That's where I got the... They used white gesso, but I got the yellows and the pinks and the reds off of here. A little bit of blue that ended up on my bird. Uh, but if you look at the, just kind of thumb through this magazine, you'll see that yellows are a predominant color in here. I've noticed that yellow ochre, ochres and yellows. Well, there's pinks and blues in here too, but... Um, the thing of it is, do you feel like, uh, yeah, I feel like this could almost fit in this magazine. It's a Somerset style almost. I don't really work in this style a lot. If you look at my art, I'm more illustrative than, uh, th uh, this is more of a, I'll call it a Somerset style. Um. This is not usually the style I work in, so it's 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 pulling me out of my style. I like to draw a lot. This is this is drawing, but it's not the drawing that I do. The type of drawing that I do. So I feel like I could paint this in big red letters, but I'm going to leave it alone. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> Let's go look at chat. And I think that... Um, I'm not done talking. Um, I think that when you get a magazine like this, this is a good way to use your magazine other than sitting and reading and saying, oh, that's cool, you know, or I should try that. Something, you know, when you actually get in here, you're pulling techniques off of here. You're kind of mixing them up. But this is a good way to get in and use the techniques that are on here. Look at those ladies. Doesn't that remind you of the envelopes that I did? That I still have to send out? An ode to fashion. Ooh, I'm going to have to come back and read that article. Ooh, cool. All right. <laughs> and the other way to use your magazine is I'm going to repeat something that Dee Dee Willingham says. When you get a magazine and you sit down and read it, read it with an ink pen and and, and if you don't want to write in the magazine, get some post-it notes. And when you see something that looks interesting that you might want to try, note it so that you don't forget it. You know, um, use it as a workbook. Look at that dis word discover there. Oh, I love that right there, dis the word discover. I like that. All right, so let's go look at chat now. <laughs> oh, there's um, Kushan. Hi, Kushan. She says she's going to go now. Bye, Kushan. Thanks for joining me tonight, joining us tonight. I wonder how much out of frame I got while I was working on this. It's kind of in frame now. Uh, Mary must have animal magnetism. <laughs> I like the result, too. Uh, so far, I've done one, two, three, four. This is my fourth page, and I have not been unhappy with any of them. This other one that I did the other morning, um, Thursday morning, I did it really fast. It's in the magazine. I did it really fast. But I'm still not unhappy with it. Ooh, I, you got to be sure you don't glue your pages together. I did this one the other morning. And I did it really, really fast. Um, this, of course, is a head here. And there's a lady dancer down here. 
Um, and then there's just technique in here, different. And I only use six or seven prompts that I could see. I would like to bring this head out a little bit more, but I'm going to leave it just like it is because it is, it is what it is. But yeah, I've done four pages now of yummy pages. And I, I haven't been disappointed in one of them. Sometimes I wonder where I'm going. And sometimes you kind of, just like when you're doing a pick 10, you kind of have to adjust your prompts and adjust what you're doing to fit, you know, how your page is telling you to be. But I'm not unhappy with any of them. Nina says, Deborah, my, my kitty sugar pie is on my lap listening to Mary. Aww. Deborah says, maybe she just likes it when Mary throws me in the trash. <laughs> Sassy likes Mary talking to her. Aw, hi, Sassy. Let's see, Deborah says, I started pasting what I began to answer what fussing cutting was for you. I'm typing in the dark. My cat, Sassy, lying between me and the keyboard. What kind of paper? I am using a magazine. I'm using the Victoria... Um, the Vic, the current issue of the Victoria magazine. So the paper is magazine paper. It's kind of a gloss paper, but it is holding the media quite nice. Now, I don't know if I'd watercolor on this. I guess I would. Uh, you might want to put a, I hate to say a gesso, uh, but I don't, watercolor might just roll off. You might use an ink tense. Watercolor, I don't think, would work too good in this magazine. Uh, it might, but the pages are glossy. But I'm going to continue working. Like, couldn't you see a fun page, a really simple page? My pages get kind of, with, with 12 prompts, you get a lot on there. But look at that teacup. Wouldn't that be fun to alter that? It's pretty the way it is, but... I don't know. I think I could sit down and have a cup of tea in that page. Let's see. What I'm trying to follow chat and then I go off and... Um, Sue had to leave. Good night, Sue. Sweet dreams. I think she's gone. Or was... Who was in a... Oh, Kushan. Kushan, I think, is from uh, Finland. Oh, there's Azure. Hi, Azure. Uh, she likes a lot of Japanese, but I think she's from Finland, Kushan. She's been in here before, but yeah, if you come into... She's gone now, but uh, if you come into the chat rooms, please use English because most of the people in here are English. And I know there's a translator, but in order to translate it, they'd have to. So if you don't use English, uh, we know Kushan. We know who she is, so she's probably not saying anything really bad. But um, if, you, if you come in here and don't use English, you might get, your comment might get deleted. Because we just talk about English in here. I hate to be that way, but. Mrs. Gigi says, good morning, Kushan. And Kushan says, Gigi. Something, 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 something. So I, she's talking to Gigi. Asher says, fussy cut is just the term used for cutting out stuff and trying to keep the details on the edges. There you go. Finland. Kushan is from Finland. Mrs. Gigi is from Sweden. Allie K went to bed. <laughs> Was it Allie K that went to bed or Susan that went to bed? Oh, Allie K says, my eyes are tired. Yeah, it's it's a quarter to one here. Almost a quarter to one. So what did I do tonight? I did this. We'll leave this out. This might become my thumbnail. Um, I'm going to have to find a good place for my prompts. So I'm going to put it in the back here. Uh, let's see, I worked on the postcard, which I almost knocked way behind. What else did I do? I worked on stamping envelopes for Beth Schuler. 
Uh, I kind of need to get back to making my list because I forget the things I do. I got out my um, butterfly tea uh, seam binding here. It's nice and dry. We looked at that. It turned it... I, I think there's probably the yellow in it probably turned it a little light green. But I'm happy with it. I'm happy with it. Uh, I wish I could find more seam binding. I uh, Now what I saw on... Uh, what I saw on Amazon, I saw a lot of twill tape. I did see some, I think it said cotton rayon. And this might be a rayon in here. I don't know what this is. But I guess I could order some and see if it's what I want. Because I want more seam binding. But you go in the stores and try to find it. I don't know, Joann's might have it. But uh, Walmart didn't have it, and Hobby Lobby didn't have it. So I quit looking. <laughs> I cut this out of my stash. So I think that's about all I did tonight other than stamp those envelopes, which are someplace behind me. We opened up the Happy Mail, which was this butterfly field book from uh, Crafty Mamas. Um... Will that hold that? Yeah. Well, no. Um, let me get the owl out here. I put him behind me. Did I not put him someplace behind me? Well, I'm not going to get him out. I'm not going to look all over ever, all night. So that's about what I did tonight. I can't get this to stay open. Actually, I think I'd like this over on here. Let's put this over here. <laughs> we'll let the owls be out over there. Oh, and you guys can't see because I have to tip my camera. I have a lot more that I'd like to do. We worked on my postcard tonight. Sort of like that. So, tomorrow is Monday. Tomorrow's Monday. Dee Dee Willingham comes on at 8.30 Eastern. And then later on, Janet Young comes on. I think it's around 1 o'clock. But don't take that for sure. I get times mixed up. But Janet... Young comes on a little bit after Dee Dee. Uh, and uh, then if I'm not uh, mistaken, Kathy Arbor comes on in there someplace. And then later at night, at 7 o'clock, Lisa Eclectic Life comes on between 6.30 and 7. I keep saying 7, but the last couple weeks she's been coming on early. And... Uh, whether she does that all the time or not, I don't know. That's up to her. That's why I say I quit. I think I'm going to quit saying times because I get all confused. Um, then I'll be back on at 4.30 on Tuesday morning. So there we go. I did a lot. I feel like I did a lot. But, oh, I covered up my seam binding. Let's get that seam binding out here. We want that to show. I feel like I did a lot. Well, you know, I stopped and I had to paint. I had to paint that napkin back. And then I made the postcard from... That took some time. So we really painted. That took some time just to paint the napkin back. And then we made a postcard out of it. So I'm going to say good night. Have a great week. Have a good week. Go do some art. Sweet dreams, everybody. Bye. Oh, and thank you for the super chat. Did somebody else give me a super chat, or did that all come from Terry? I think that might have all come from Terry. I'll have to check.
everybody.